Tick tock, time to rock. Tick tock, time to rock. Time to rizzock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's make sure we're live because yep. we have not set up like this before. We have the mighty Tim who set up his camera here. Set up his camera, connected it to the laptop. Look, he's clean. I don't see us yet. There. A few seconds. What? We're good. Yeah, but I don't see us. Uh, there we go. Hey, that does look good. Yes, sir. It's not freezing? No, I, I just paused it. Okay. All right, guys. First, tell us if you can hear us clearly because uh, we have a mic here. And tell us how it's going before we start talking. And tell us if these fools in the back are too loud. Let's go! Let's go! Hey, guys, what's better? TikTok, time to rock, or let's go! You got to do that. <laughs> Come on, man! You got you can't, you can't have just part of it. You gotta have all of it. What's up, Cheryl? Good to see you. Yo, so uh, yeah, we are. Uh, I I realized I hadn't. I didn't. I didn't tell anyone I wasn't going to be posting for a few days. But we are at a we are at a conference in Texas. It's the CIA. Uh, conference that's put together by cross Examine. Hey, Jorge, come here for one second. Just yeah. tell everyone. This is Jorge Gill. Everyone calls Jorge. Why do they call you? Why do they call you the Pablo, the Pablo Escobar of apologetics? Oh, I thought I thought they were calling me the Tony Montana. Why do they call? Yeah, they call, I call you that too. But the Tony Montana. I call you that. Gone. I call you the Juan Valdez of apologetics. No, no, Juan, Valdez, well, Juan Valdez is actually an apologist. Here, here come up here. So what tell up? everyone what CIA is. Well, the Cross Examine Instructor Academy is uh, a three-day intensive training when we teach you how to be a better communicator. We're not going to teach you apologetics. We're going to teach you how to do apologetics like the pros. We have David Wood as one of our instructors. We have Bobby Conway. We have Frank Turek, Greg Kokel. We have Brett Kunkel, Richard Howe, myself, Alyssa Childers. And am I leaving anybody out? Did you mention uh, the detective? Oh, yeah, Jay Warner Wallace, yeah, the cold case homicide detective. So if you want to get better at your presentation skills, it's a three-day training when you present to us. So the idea is that you come over here, and we're not just going to tell you what to do. You're going to come. You're going to present. We're going to shred you to pieces, and then you're going to come back and do it all over again the next day, and you're going to be super awesome when you're done. So it's a three days, 12 hours a day. Pretty much all day doing apologetics with people that have been doing it for a very, very long time. So if you want to sign up, we're going to have the sign up sheet open, uh, the landing page open maybe next month for the CIA 2020, 2021 is going to be in Costa Mesa, California. Sign up. All right. And all I asked what it was what it was. <laughs> Not for a 13-hour dissertation on the hey, topic. Man. Yeah. Got a, got a shameless plug, baby. Hey, what, what, what did I say to Jay Warner Wallace today? Jay Warner Wallace was walking by. I was sitting there with uh, with John McRae, Veda MC, and Carlton back here. We're all sitting at a table. And I said, hey, got a question for you. <laughs> you you're, you're a detective. Why could you explain for us our police officers slaughtering black men, women, and children in the streets? Please answer. And... Uh, <laughs> He actually, he didn't freak out at all. He oh, no, actually, yeah, no. he actually sat there and he, yeah, he wasn't falling. He wasn't, well, Dave. He wasn't falling for criminals. <laughs> no, no, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. <laughs> didn't say that. Um, all right, so anyway, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I realized I wasn't posting for a few days and didn't tell everyone I was gone. Hey, you guys, well, shh. Yes, sir. The live stream takes precedence. Um, so, yeah, I realized I hadn't told everyone I was gone and everyone is uh, wondering where I was at because I'd been posting every day. Yeah. But I uh, figured yeah. we finally wrapped everything up. We kind of stayed busy here. So getting up early in the morning, going out, giving presentations, watching presentations um, and doing all sorts of events. And now it's uh, finished, finished four in the afternoon here in Texas. I thought I thought about doing a quick announcement when we got down here to everyone that uh, since we're going to be in Texas, then once the conference wraps up, then maybe people in the area can get together. But then I realized this is like the COVID capital of the world right now. And so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that wasn't the, the yeah. best idea. So, um, anyway, realized we got a bunch of people here and a bunch of people who aren't even back here, but a bunch of people who are, um, in the hotel that we might want to, uh, just sort of keep trading people out. Right. Oh, so, so when you say people in the hotel, you mean apologists. 
apologists. You know, yeah, not random, random people. people. Yeah, I want to go get people in the hey. <laughs> hey, you across the hall. You want to be you want to be famous? You want to be famous on YouTube? Um, yeah, but we got a lot of cool people here, so we figure we just uh, go live with everyone, have a chat. And so you want to start? You want to start? Yeah, you, you guys can be wanna, greeting people or taking questions. What yeah, do you yeah, do? we can start taking some questions too. Um, you guys, all right, go ahead and throw in some questions, and we'll we'll start getting through some questions. Duanji here says, "This guy is one of my influences converting to Christian." Nice. Who are you talking about? You talking about me or John or anyone here? Hey, wonder, look at this. Many, I wonder how many memers we got. If you're a memer. Any memers here? Any memers. There's got to be like eight of you in the world. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, you, no. You, John, has a, John has a cute channel. <laughs> no, for real, guys. You don't. You don't know what this guy knows. He uh -huh. know he knows vastly more than he's been implementing. So, it is a matter of time before his channel is possibly passes mine. <laughs> yeah, once David gets banned. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. Oh, there there are people. See, yeah. Look, Brenda here says Brenda here says I'm in Dallas. Welcome to Texas. Yeah, that's where nice. we are. We are slightly outside of Dallas, but that's actually where we uh, where we. Yeah, there's all the memers. Hey, Benjamin Handelman said, "Is Carlton hiding know, back said, there?" Tell Carlton to get on the camera. You know Benjamin Handelman? Oh, yeah, that's uh, come yes. say hi. Come say hi. Ben, what's uh, up, my dude? Hey, I don't know where the camera is. This right here? Yes, this yeah, one. This one's right here. It's right here, bro. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Hey, 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 Carl, Carlton, come here, come here, come here. So, uh, so we're over. We go over someone's house last night, and there's these these three young white dudes. <laughs> <laughs> And Carlton starts telling, starts, starts talking about reparations. <laughs> and every, everything, these guys were like 18, 19, 20 years old. Everything these guys said, we would interpret as racist. That was and, funny too, because they were like big fans too. And so yeah, they're like, yeah, they're like, they were over there because they, because they wanted to, they wanted to, they wanted to hang out. But yeah, guys, I don't know. I don't know if you noticed, but we tend to, uh, we tend to mess with people whenever mm -hmm. possible. And man, that is an awesome opportunity. But that was a, that was a fun couple of hours, wasn't it? That was, was fun, man. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw Alan Parr from the beat. Right. Got to kick it with him for a while. Got a lot of work yeah, Alan people. Parr. Um, man, I wish he was a little meaner because that dude looks exactly like Denzel. Yeah. And I would love to have a Denzel character, <laughs> you know, like Training Day or something like that, <laughs> meeting meeting Muhammad in the Boom Boom Room because that yeah. would just be awesome, right? Yeah. That would be so awesome. Um. All right, you want to take some questions? And we'll take a few yeah, yeah. questions, and then we'll trade out and see who wants to uh, who wants to step out. Yeah, yeah. Or if you see something that would be good for uh, for someone here. Well, all I see is a bunch of memers in, in the stands. Memers, so, uh, ain't no yeah, memers yeah, yeah. here, man. Show me one memer. Oh, come on! All the, they're all memers. They're not they're not here for you, David. I know it's hard for you to believe. You know, v Vic, Victor uh, Victor says uh, I got a I got a question for the maid. <laughs> all right. So I guess because the place is messy. No, wait, Bobby. Wait. Where's Bobby? <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically, when I'm in a hotel room, we always have like camera equipment and computer equipment. So I put the I I leave even if I'm there for a week, I leave the "Do Not Disturb" sign up on the door. So like, I would rather have a messy place and someone you know messing around with uh, with camera lenses and and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, generally, hotel room if I'm in it is a disaster up until I leave. But I do I don't know why I do tend to uh, I do tend to clean up before I leave. <laughs> Hey, check this out. Oh, bias call. What's up, man? Just saw your comment. Good to see you, man. Melissa Everhart says, uh, have y'all ever been to Mass? I believe you mean Catholic Mass or you mean Massachusetts? She, she means Catholic Mass. Catholic Mass? I reckon that you to see it. I think she's yeah. a Catholic, one of my Catholic sisters. I, mean, I actually grew up going to Mass. Oh, yeah? I've been to yeah. Mass. Jorge says he grew up, uh, he grew up there. Um, I have been to Catholic services before because uh, my, wife, my wife's family is, is Catholic. Um, yeah, look, uh, Dewal here says, yeah, I'll be doing a video on this when I get back. Again, I've been gone for a couple of days, but uh, Dewal oh, yeah. said, matter of fact, you're the one you're the yeah. one to show me that that uh, that article today. Yeah. Uh, Dewal said, Christian girl in, in Pakistan got kidnapped and converted. Um, make a video about it. Yeah, so yeah, she was 14. Yeah, yeah, she's 14. So people show up with machine guns, kidnap her, uh, take her away, marry her off. Then a, a lower court judge says you have to they, they take her to a woman's shelter. And then a higher court judge said, she has to be taken back to her Muslim husband because she is a Muslim now because she converted and uh, yeah. So welcome to, welcome to tolerant Pakistan. Yeah. Cold world, son. Everyone oh. loves Pakistan. Oh yeah, look at this. Hey, look at this. Roman says 
Yeah. Almost 500,000. Yeah. Did you know that? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, because, see, Wood has, um, he's been taking his donor money and buying subscribers to inflate his numbers. So. <laughs> that, would be, that would be funny. That would be funny. It's like COVID. That would be messed up. What is, his channel is basically COVID statistics. <laughs> so. These people give me super chats and I buy subscribers. <laughs> Trinity Radio says, Brax, I'm a what up? Yeah, meme yeah, team, son. Where, where this is this must have been when you asked it. That uh, crash says, what do you meme? <laughs> Brenda, memer here. Nice. Cheryl R. Yeah. Memer. Memer. By his call. Love my memers. Big fan of John here. Yeah. Wait, what is this? Jamie Jamie Boyd, what about your security, Doctor? Well, what security? Uh, security? We don't need no security. Here's my security. Here's my security <laughs> right here. Two guns right here. Two guns. <laughs> Cat seventeen memer. Nice, good to see you. Uh oh, we got someone else knocking on the door. Hey, come oh, say hi. Right, we got beta. We got we got a we got a freestyler here. What's up? What it do? Yeah, is he a real one? What it do? <laughs> All right, so we got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's that? Is this, is this a rap studio? <laughs> we got so we got Veda. So look, who do we got here? We got Veda. We got a. Uh, oh, what's cool is we got a. Uh, we got this young buck back here. We got this young buck named Aiden. Oh yeah. Who has Tourette's syndrome? So he'll just start blurting out the nat. There's a bomb in here. All sorts of stuff. And it's just uh, it's wild stuff. But uh, anyway, we got a we got a pretty 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 cool crowd that we keep going on here. Yep. All right. David Wood for president, 2024. David Wood for president. I don't know if that's the... <laughs> hey, wait, hold on, David. If you were president, what would be the first thing you would do if you were president? That's what the says. It says David Wood for president, 2024. So let's say that this is, this could, this is actually going to be your, um, your moment right here. Hey, guys. Everyone's complaining about the horrible noise back there. Use your inside voice. Learn to whisper. So look, if you were... If you could be president in 2024, what would you do? What would your policy be? Go ahead and give us your pitch. I would rather die 100,000 horrible <laughs> bloody deaths than be president. So, yeah. yeah, I can't imagine it happening. Not my style. Um, Let's go resign. Yeah, that would be my first act. Um, <laughs> first thing you do. <laughs> I don't you, know. I might, I, might, I might go crush someone I don't like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might do, I might do something. <laughs> my, my first and only act is to nuke. This dude. <laughs> All right. Oh, and guys, uh, feel free to. Let's see. John Buckley here says, "You guys ever gonna come to Boston area?" I've never been. I don't think. Have you been? I actually grew up in the area. Uh, this is so before West Virginia when I was real little, like three, four, five, and six. I lived in Chicopee, um, Chicopee, Chicopee, Massachusetts. <laughs> So kind yeah. of in the area. What's that? You got vocab. In oh, the house. vocab Malone. What do? Hey, vocab. Hey, vocab. We need a freestyle. Uh -huh. Oh wait, you're not here. I guess we'll go with Veda. <laughs> vocab says must be nice. Vocab, did Wood invite you? I did invite him. Oh, and he, he never did? responded. Oh. You, you, whereas you responded, and so you came. Yeah. Yo. Um. Oh yeah. So Boston. Yeah, we probably come at some point. I'm sure. Huh? We travel a lot. Seems like. Uh, Cashman says, when did you realize Muhammad was a fraud? After like 10 minutes of <laughs> investigating him, pretty much. And if you, if you, if you look at the, the obvious features now, now to be fair, when I was studying Islam, I was looking into some of the significant issues. And so one of the first things that really stood out, this is before I knew about even like Muhammad and Aisha and these things. But one of the first things I found out was what's called the Zainab affair, where Muhammad took the wife of his own adopted son. Now, that would be one thing, right? So this isn't just whether it's okay to take the wife of your own adopted son after yeah. causing the divorce by lusting after that. That's one thing. That seems messed up enough. It was the revelations that he got that justified it and where Allah explains why he needs Muhammad to marry the wife of his adopted son and that it's in order for men to understand that it's really okay to marry the wives of their own adopted sons. And I'm just sitting there thinking, wait a minute, 
He, if Allah wants to reveal that, he can reveal that. He could just say it in the Quran and say, guys, it's okay for you to marry the wives of your own adopted sons. He could say it. But in the Quran, what he actually says, Surah 33, verse 37, you can look it up. What Allah actually says is, Muhammad, this is so important for men to realize that it's okay to take the wives of their own adopted sons. I need you to go out and do it. <laughs> because he's the and it's just, of conduct. Yeah, and that's that's the same chapter. That's Surah, that's Surah 33, oh, that's verse awesome. 21. That's the same chapter. Oh, wow. So you know, my brother's just, on. What? My brother's watching. Your brother's watching? Yeah. This is Tim. Do you want to say hi, by the way? Do you want to come sure. on? Yeah. This is this yeah. is Tim. This is uh this is Bobby Conway, the guy who helps all Bobby Conway with all his uh videos. Woman and apologist. They have the exact same haircut for some reason. <laughs> and uh <laughs> Yo, here's a good question. Hey, it, hey check this out. Check, wait one second. Go Alex ahead, Fernandez says, where are your masks? Well, fortunately, we've all been tested. Anywhere we're going at the conference and so on, they're pointing this thing at our head and checking our temperature and doing all that stuff. So unless we got it like today, we're clean. Yeah. Um, so we're good. Um, oh, yeah, but if you want one, I'm not touching your nasty know, mask, man. Like, no, we have one. They're here. Get that disgusting so, uh, thing off me. Ben. Ben, what's up, bro? He says, who'd win in a knife fight, vocab or John? I'm scrappy. I said it'd probably be me um, in, a knife fight. in a knife fight. I don't know. I've never seen either one of you oh. throw down. Yeah, I'd say I'd probably win. I'd say I'd be both of you, but th I, that was not the question. Um, Silly PB said, great interview in the Eric Metaxas show. Yeah, so I'm actually going to be back on the Eric Metaxas show because he uh, – his organization originally contacted me when I made a video about why some people hate cops. And so I was talking about prison experiences, but somehow before, uh, before the show, he watched my testimony video as well. So we ended up talking about that, but still wants me to uh, come back on to talk about prison and uh, Islam as well. So pretty cool stuff. You, you, you have to respect, see, as someone who, started blasting away at Muhammad when it was not popular for Christians to do that. It was considered, I mean, the, 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 what you were taught, what you were taught, if you were trained in evangel evangelism towards Muslims and so on, you're taught never criticize Muhammad, never criticize the Quran. It's just going to drive Muslims away. They'll never listen to you. And I knew very different from personal experience. So I started blasting away at Muhammad in the Quran. And uh, so it was kind of an untouchable for many years. So when these Geniuses like Frank Turek say, David, come to CIA and train people in Islam. You have to think, man, this is a smart dude. This is a smart dude. And then we see Eric Metaxas, man, let's get David on the radio show and then and YouTube here to talk about Islam. These are smart dudes. These are smart. They're people are catching on. And guys, what is Islam going to do when people finally catch on? Because that's been that's been Islam's one of its main couple of ways of protecting itself for the past uh, past couple of decades is, uh, hey, you Christians, if you really want to reach us and convince us, just never point out all the the stupid nonsense in our religion. Just don't point that out. Yeah, because if you really want to reach us, don't point out any of the problems in our religion. If you point out the problems, then we'll never listen to you again. Total nonsense. You start pointing out the problems, they can't stay away. Right? They're drawn to you. They just notice they keep coming. They keep coming and coming. Guys, when I did Muhammad Week, we did Muhammad Week. We we're inviting Muslims on to join us live. We have to do like Muhammad Month because of all the Muslims who contact and say they want to join us live. And what happens? Our prophet just gets exposed. They can't stay away. They can't do it. They can't do it. All like right. a moth to a flame. What movie is that? Oh, Spider-Man. So predictable. Like a moth to a flame. What else we got? Um... Oh yeah, how long have we been on? About twenty minutes. Hey, who, who who do you who do you guys want to see up here? We got a we got a room full of we got a room full of guys here. Tell us who you want to see. Well, they gotta know who who's here. Who do we got? So we got a roll call. It's the roll call. Roll call. It's the roll call. We got uh we got Veda MC. We got Bobby Conway, the one minute apologist. We got Jorge. Bobby Conway is, but you don't say it's your real radio when you say my I don't know he who's real and who's not, he, man. He assumed that I needed some extra content. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel oh, bad. You know what I mean? It was a slight towards you. Sorry, David. Look at this. Sorry, David. There's a question coming in. What's that? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'll just, you can go catch up to me. David Wood, please make a video comparing the Christian heaven and the Islamic heaven. Well, dep depending on what yeah. kind of person you are, you might you might prefer the Islamic heaven. <laughs> given a certain kind of person, if you want to, uh, if you want, to, 
If you want a paradise where you get perpetual virgins, and you say, how can they be perpetual virgins if you're having sex with them? Easy. Allah restores their virginity every time you have sex with them. But how can you have sex with all these women? Easy. Allah gives you this miraculous, supercharged penis that never goes limp. And so you get to spend all eternity deflowering virgins. And that that appeals to a certain kind of person. So if you're that kind of person, have I got a religion for you? <laughs> But no, that would be that would be a good video. I used to talk about it a lot in, in debates. Like you know, I'm talking like 2007, 2008, 2009, and so on. But, I was uh, thinking that you don't talk about that. No, I, I I used to when but it, it would be when it's on topic as sort of what is the goal of, yeah, of yeah, Islam yeah. and so on. David yeah. Muhammad takes pills. <laughs> <laughs> Allah, the ultimate Viagra. The divine Viagra. <laughs> Uh, Connor, Connor, Connor Slack, Connor Slack says, "What do you think of Farid response?" Well, I've only ever seen, I've only basically ever, as far as I can recall, I've only ever seen three things from Farid's response. One was a video that everyone said, "Up, oh, Farid responded to you, so go ahead and address this video in a live stream." We addressed it in the live stream, and by the time we were done, even the Muslims would not defend what Farid said. We're saying, "Defend this, defend what he just said right there. Say you agree with him." They wouldn't say it. Uh, so that was one thing. So mo even Muslims, once you actually go through the evidence, or they think this is embarrassing. But people who weren't Muslims were saying, why are you responding to this guy? This is the stupidest stuff ever. So that was one. Uh, the other is his tweet where he said, what did he say? Oh, yeah, because people have pointed out that, um, you know, if you're if you're giving child brides to grown men, that that's actually rape because girls aren't capable they're not even an age where they're capable of giving consent and Farid posted how can it be rape when the parents give their consent <laughs> right? oh, man. So, so that was kind of embarrassing to uh, a lot of people uh, mainly people who don't share his view and uh, finally um, uh, I was on a live stream with the apostate prophet and he played a clip um, or, or I saw it in one of his videos he, he, I saw a clip where Farid was explaining why no one recalls the moon being split. Uh, and he, he basically said everyone must have been asleep. So something along those lines. But yeah, guys, not impressed. But, but, don't. <laughs> everyone should get your mind around the idea that you don't need to, to, to jump on everyone who responds to your video, right? We want everyone, we want guys watching our videos and focusing on ours. Meanwhile, we're blasting away at Muhammad, blasting away at the Quran, right? And they're scrambling to respond. And part of the reason they're scrambling to respond is they want us to divert our attention to them and away from Muhammad and the Quran. Not going to happen. I'll occasionally respond if, you know, I'm bored and I want to have some fun and actually respond to some of these guys. Or if I'm trying to help some of these guys out. Because some of these guys, we want to increase in popularity. And so, yeah, but mainly, no, mainly I'm going after, I mean, once you want, gosh, guys, once... Once Yasser Qadi admitted that there are holes in the narrative, we got a golden opportunity right there. And uh, I, I said golden opportunity. That made me that made me think of the Muhammad. Yeah, Johnson. No, no. The Muhammad Johnson. <laughs> 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 be quiet about that. Um, Look at Lay's comment. Who? Lay. Tyron Lay. Too many too many comments. Tyron Lay. What was that? Tyron Lay. Why did why would God punish you for not believing in a historical event uh, or a historical event? Why not just reward? repentance yeah i don't think god's punishing people for not believing in a historical event um are you talking about speak up a little closer oh yeah no yeah i was just gonna say i don't think god's punished i don't i don't know what you're referring to god's not punishing people for not believing in a historical event and even in, in even then i mean that's kind of the question why would you not believe in a historical event yeah anyways um Samuel Lane says, what, in your opinion, is the strongest argument in favor of Islam and how would you refute it? I get asked this question um, not terribly often, but at least a couple times a year, people will ask me this question uh, because they like to hear it. And, and you don't have to think, hey, if I if I don't adhere to a certain position, then I can't, you know, consider what its best arguments are. So if, if you were talking about atheism, you could pick your best argument from for atheism. You might say, well, all the evil and suffering in the world is the best argument for atheism or something like that. You could you could argue that in Islam. 
gosh, it's hard because really any of the arguments takes literally four to five minutes of research to find out how bogus it is. I would say if you really, gosh, I can't even say this. I would say just, you know, arguing, well, you know, hey, it's this pure monotheistic religion and promotes pure monotheism and one God and look around you in yeah. nature and this shows that there's one God. But well, they have some uh, philosophical it, arguments. They're just not good for Islam, right? Like some of their philosophical ones are decent. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're, 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 which, there's 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 yeah, lots of there's lots of um, there's lots of like natural theology in the Quran. It's constantly appealing to nature to show that God exists, and uh, there there are arguments that that one God exists and so on. The problem is once you dig a little deeper and you find out what the doctrine actually is and all the stuff you have to add to it, yeah. it just it's just bad. So it's bad, yeah. I can't even. I mean, I can't even think of how I could argue seriously for Islam. Like right now, if I wanted to, I could argue for atheism, right? I could argue that I, if I wanted to right now, I could argue that Christianity is false. There are all sorts of positions I could argue for and argue against. I don't see how I could I could uh, make any serious case for Islam that wouldn't be based on deception, right? Like I could sit here and say, well, of course, the Quran has been perfectly and miraculously preserved since the time of Muhammad, but it, we, I mean, we know that is a that is a flat out lie. It's just a lie, and so can't think of any any arguments for Islam that aren't based on deception or ignorance. Hey, um, Uga Booga, um, if you if there's a video of an atheist or something using that um, an argument around that, send it to me, and I'll do a video response on that topic. So you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, somebody asked about best Bible studies. Bobby, you want to weigh in on that? Best Bible studies. Bobby Conway being asked about best Bible studies. Wake up. There's your mic right there. All right. What's up? Hey, I just wanted to apologize on behalf of uh, David Wood. I know that, uh, you know, some of his uh, inappropriate use of the of the tongue in the vernacular <laughs> about the supercharge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm teasing. That's what sucks. You can't even, you can't yeah, even yeah, talk no. about what's in the Muslim sources without... Exactly. I, know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, it's tough. You, immediately, yeah, you, you immediately go I'm, to PG-13. Just I'm off. sure everybody died laughing on the supercharged penis that, that you're given. Um, <laughs> you know, it is, it is. There are things that are hard to grasp. But as, as, as it relates to um, Bible, Bible studies... studies. <laughs> Perfect segue. <laughs> well, we're still trying to recover. Now, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You're the, first Dude. of all, you're the one minute apologist. You're on a timer. Well, uh, <laughs> one minute. Go. You don't understand. We're trying. Okay, we got one minute. Yeah. We're, okay. Well, I'll take a few seconds to say we're still trying to recover from uh, your, your use of uh, perpetual virgins and stuff back there. But getting back on track with about what. 45 seconds left. I would say go check out YouVersion. Uh, that's the largest size app. There's tons of Bible studies there. Even at the One Minute Apologist, we put out several Bible studies that you can check out. And so I would say that's the, you know, kind of the go-to place uh, that I would encourage people to check out. Wow. That was only 15 seconds. Know, dude, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, 15 well, second apologies, second baby. Apologies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bravo, Sarah, bravo. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway. Um... Says Sam's still alive. Sam's still alive. Dude, right. Orega here <laughs> says, Hi, Dr. David. Did you hear that Muhammad Hijab sent a message to the apostate prophet to make suicide? Yes. I was I was on the program where the apostate prophet was uh, discussing that. I think your program with AP has made many Muslims disappointed. Yes. In case anyone isn't familiar with that, you can go watch it. But uh, <laughs> we, the program was supposed to be about Muhammad. We're going to talk about Muhammad, like the so-called prophet Muhammad. But... Uh, he apparently backed out of a debate with um, the apostate prophet right before it started. Well, well, he had originally agreed that they were going to have an online debate. Then he started demanding, you must face me in person. You must face me in person. And apostate prophet was saying, no, we, we agreed here. And uh, so then Muhammad Hijab was saying he's not going to debate um, unless it's face to face. And so we, then we ended up talking about Muhammad Hijab and Muhammad Hijab came into the chat and then started saying some of the most perverted stuff you've ever seen anyone ever say, talking about, uh, I don't even want to talk about it here. You can go, go and watch it. But Muhammad Hijab earned himself a new nickname with all of that stuff. And it's not, it's not a nice one. <laughs> so I'm just posting a picture of a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So it's a, it's a, it's not fun, but I mean, it's just, it's just amazing that someone that, you know, has been, you know, he's been put forward by Zakir Naik as someone who's, who's, you know, going to be taking the torch for Islam. This is one of the guys who's going to be going out and debating and stuff. And 
the second you start disagreeing with him about anything, then, you know, he starts talking about the most perverted stuff you've ever seen. And actually, in that program, I kind of defended him because if you go to the Muslim sources, that's how Muhammad and his companions were, right? Muhammad said, if uh, someone brags about his, his lineage and so on, tell him to go bite his, his father's penis, stuff like that. He talked like that. Um, Abu Bakr said, uh, said to one of the pagans, um, he, told, he said to one of the pagans who believed in, in goddesses, he said, go suck a lot's clitoris, right? So he's basically saying, go perform oral sex on your goddess. Now, just, you can just imagine if we talk to Muslims like that, if we said, hey, go suck Allah's penis or your prophet's penis or something like that, they, they, would, they would be enraged. They would say, how dare you not have better behavior than this? And yet that's the behavior exhibited by their prophet and his companion. So it's just this endless, endless display of hypocrisy. And so when we see people like Muhammad Hijab talking about these disgusting things, we think, oh, what a horrible representative of Islam. No. That's the guy who's really representing Islam. Right? That's the guy who's actually doing what Muhammad said and following his example. So very interesting stuff. Um, let's see. Arab Taste here said, when can I have a discussion with David? Uh, Arab Taste, if you are a Muslim, then once I get back, we're going to we're going to um, we're going to be setting up the discussions with all of the Muslims who have contacted me and said that they want to have a discussion about about their um, about their prophet. But I have to say this, right? Guys, we, we did Muhammad Week and then there were other Muslims who wanted to discuss Muhammad. We're not stopping at Muhammad Week. After we, we finish up with the Muslims who wanted to talk about Muhammad, then we are going to switch and then we'll have a Quran Affirms the Bible Week with Muslims invited, any Muslim in the world. Muslim apologist, Muslim scholar, anyone can call in, go live with us and attempt to show that the Quran claims that the Bible has been corrupted and not that the Bible is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. So we're going to spend an entire week where Muslims from around the world can contact us and challenge us. After that, since what will happen as a result of that week is that the Muslim viewers will realize that no one on their side can show us a single verse of the Quran that, com that condemns our scriptures. That <laughs> the Muslims will finally start to realize, hopefully, that their book affirms our scriptures. And that means we need to start looking into what our scriptures teach. And so after that, we'll have Trinity Week, where we will accept Muslim calls from around the world to show us that the doctrine of the Trinity is false or unbiblical or however you want to however you want to argue it. And notice, guys, we're the ones accepting all challenges here. We're the ones going live with any Muslim in the world. Um, and, you know, people say, oh, what, what about Farid response? These guys are all invited. They're all invited. They can join us. Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa want to join us live. We know we know they'll they'll just try and turn it into an insult fest, but we'll still give them the opportunity because that's how generous we are. That's how we roll. Thank you. Yeah, you better bring your A game, son. Hey, 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 senor, senor, senora Salsa. Senora Salsa said the roll call song. What's that? She remembered the roll call song. You're too young, man. Yeah. Way back in the day, there was a, what's up, y'all? I can't remember it because this was so long ago. This was like early 90s, but it was, what's up, y'all? What's it going to be? Who's on the mic? Oh, you're always, huh? yeah, you're always. And they start going, roll call, hits the roll call, roll call, hits the roll call. When we, when we, when we do like our live news show, we need to start off with that roll call. Um, Is that like the Beastie Boys or something? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> who did you, who was your favorite rapper back in the day? When, like in the eighties? Yeah, yeah, back in the eighties. Back in the eighties. In the eighties? Yeah. I don't know. I had I had a couple different, but I liked Cool Mo D up until uh, Mama said Knock You Out came out, and then oh, then you're he lost. No, not really. I just oh, okay, you you lost, dude. All right, let's take a couple more questions here, and then we'll get something some someone else up here. Yeah. <laughs> this one says, David, make a video on how the Simpsons made more prophecies than Muhammad. Closer. This mic's far away from me. Oh, my bad. Let me move this mic so it's closer to... There we go. Why not? There we go. It says, uh, check, check, check. Uh, oh, I lost it. Ah, I hate this thing. You said Simpsons, man. Yeah, I said... Um, Simpsons made more said, prophecies Oh, yeah, make a video. Did. Yeah, Simpsons made more prophecies than Muhammad. Or it says more than Muhammad. Yeah, it did. I mean, it's just it's just funny. Here, here's, here's the problem you have, guys, is that there's this... Just concept of abrogate, I mean, not abrogate, exaggeration in Islam that 
anything you could possibly say about Muhammad or, or defend even slightly, you exaggerate it until it's massively important. So if Muhammad said anything remotely positive about like honor your, you know, honor your respect, your mother or something like that, it gets exaggerated to Muhammad was the greatest feminist of all time. Right. And so you have all of these different issues. And so you'll have Muhammad at one point saying, uh, Hey, the Romans lost, but the Romans will win later. And, and oh, lo and behold, the Roman Empire, which had a pretty good track record of eventually winning, uh, <laughs> won a battle. And then you see, this is miraculous confirmation of Islam. You see, it's all the fulfilled prophecies and so on. But if, if that's your, I mean, if that's your standard, if that's your argument, you can defend the idea that anyone's a prophet. Because everyone says something about, oh, this is what's going to happen. And then it happened. Uh, Samuel Jenkins says, hi, David, question here. How can I effectively witness to a Muslim, i.e. show them that Jesus was God? Hope you see this. Uh, uh, send them David Wood's videos. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, send them my video. Where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? Uh, Samuel, I actually made a video. I actually made a video titled, How to Share Unpleasant Facts with Pleasant Muslims. And so that's about actually criticizing Islam and so on. But the same sort of general principles that I talk about there would apply uh, even if you're trying to trying to witness. But I, I generally encourage people to um, start off by asking lots of questions and starting off with what, what I call what questions. What do you believe about Jesus? What do you believe about the Bible? What do you believe about the Quran? What do you believe about Allah? What do you believe about these things? And then eventually transition into some why questions. Why do you believe this? Why do you believe that about Muhammad? Why do you believe that about the Bible? Why do you believe that? And then once you've asked those questions, now you know this particular Muslim's reasons for believing in Islam. And now you know where you'd want to challenge that person's beliefs. And if you're talking about Jesus, well, you'd want to challenge the Muslim's beliefs about Jesus. And then so it would be, well, if you believe this, how do you explain this? If you believe that, why did Jesus say this? And then you, you, go, you go into your case. <laughs> Yo, should we? It's already. We've already been on forty minutes. Should we get someone else up here? Who yeah. want to get up here? I don't care. Yo, who wants to come up here? Man, we working out. We ain't even worried. Are you guys yeah, out here? They're back there doing push-ups. We ain't even worried about. Okay, first off. We got off. prison workout going on back here, man. Here, hey. Yeah, let Aiden sit here with me. Yeah, yeah, All right. We got Aiden first. Aiden, we got, we got Aiden. Anyone ever wondered about scooch yeah. in here? Anyone ever wondered about Tourette's syndrome? What kind of doing that, bro? Why is it inverted? Huh? Why is it inverted like this? So, uh, uh, Aiden, what's Tourette's syndrome? Yeah, it's a neurological disease. Um, uh, where like you make unwanted movements or like noises. Uh, I mean, it's not involuntary in the strict sense. Like, I can control it. It's just, like, difficult. So, like, for example, it's like an itch, like, where it's, like, you try not to itch it, but it gets, you know, the urge just, just grows over time. So, now, can, I, I've noticed that while you're talking, you speak pretty, pretty clearly yeah. and, 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 and fine. But it's when you're not talking and you're just sitting there, then you start blurting out all these noises. So, how's that? <laughs> What's oh, wrong with you guys? <laughs> what is? Am I supposed I, to be guys, gentle you, you here? Make it, <laughs> you make it sound so much worse than it actually is. Bro. Hey, seriously, no, somebody no. needs to give no. Wood a pastoral clue. Like you don't. Know, no, no, yeah, right? yeah. Come here, man. Like, 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 like we're here, bro. Okay. Bro, I know. Pastor. Yeah, earlier he was like, he was, he was saying that I like shout out bomb in an airport. That's past. That's not true, bro. <laughs> All right, everyone. Aiden, Aiden is explaining Tourette's for everyone. So let, let, let's go back. Let's go back. One, how long has this been all your life or did nah, this start at a certain time? No, nah, I started recognizing like symptoms of it. Like when I was like 10, I had like a blinking tick and then it grew um, from there. And then it probably reached its peak, if you will, like, I don't know, four years ago. And then just you know, been dealing with it since. So. It, 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 it. it doesn't decline. It just sort of stays after that or? Yeah, there'll be periods when it goes kind of just um go up and down like how prevalent it is but um yeah it, it's probably not going to get much worse and it probably and it could get better i mean some mm -hmm. people have it and when they get like because i'm 18 right now um some people when again they get like um you know middle 20s or and you mm -hmm. just get to adulthood and it kind of goes away some mm -hmm. people don't so it's yeah it's not up in the air and guys uh, uh you you aiden might look slightly familiar to us before if you're like a diehard fan who watches every everything we put out because 
Last year, CIA was in Harlem, and we were in New York, and GMS Hebrew Israelites started posting, well, why, why doesn't Mah why doesn't Vocab Malone ever show up face to face? Where's Vocab Malone? We're like, hey, we're worse than that. They're like, yeah, if he came up here or whatever, I wish he'd come up here face to face. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. saying he, he, they, wish Muhammad, they wish Vocab would show up and, and, and confront them face to face. This is the leaders of GMS. Yeah, that's the leader. These, these are the leaders. Left. These are, who's on the left? That's me. Um, yeah, the leaders oh, of GMS. Oh, yeah, that's you. Yeah, this is Aiden. So, so check this out. So uh, the leaders of GMS in Harlem were like, hey, wait a minute, we're in New York. So we just roll up on them. But Aiden actually lives in Harlem. He's like, I want to go. So he, he rolls up on, uh, on, I'm like 16. on a camp. <laughs> He's 16 years old and rolls up on a camp of uh, GMS Hebrew Israelites with us. And uh, <laughs> with, yeah, so anyway, we were there for like two and a half hours having a discussion with, um, with the Hebrew Israelites and it's funny because that particular that particular camp, they believe I'm one of them, right? They believe I'm a I'm a yeah. black Hebrew Israelite, right? Because that particular mm -hmm. camp believes it's uh, your your skin color can be white even though your in your lineage actually goes back to a Hebrew Israelite, and so you, you might have had so many so many white people interbreeding with your line for so long that you look white even though you can actually trace your lineage all the way back. But here's what's interesting. They believe that people who are like that, well, how do you, how do you, how would you know, apart from a, some sort of DNA test that verified it, how would you know that someone can actually be traced back? Well, they believe that you could, you can, you can spot the signs based on how someone dances or how someone sings or beatboxes. And so, <laughs> so they saw videos of me beatboxing and uh, they concluded that, that I'm actually a, a black Hebrew Israelite. And so that, that's pretty cool. And what's funny, what's funny is uh, uh, the leader's name, I think is Tahar. But in videos where vocab will insult me, vocab like, you know, just joking around insults me, Tahar will post a video response saying, you shouldn't be talking to David Wood like that. You shouldn't be talking about David Wood like that. So it's cool, he's actually, uh, he's actually defending me. So those guys are okay in my book. Anyway, back to, uh, back to Tourette's syndrome. Yeah. So how did, <laughs> I segue back, what? I'm, br I'm bringing it yeah, back. So, yeah. Now, so, it, is that something that when you're in school, because obviously you go to school and then you're sitting there making weird noises all day, yelling out bomb threats? <laughs> nope. Have you no, ever? Have that you never happened? That's have you, not true. Have you ever yelled out a curse word in school? Um, not yell, no. But you, yell. you've said it, so you. I have sort of, corporalia, yes, but I can control it pretty well. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're sitting there making all sorts of weird noises around people. Now, how have people reacted? Because I, I've heard that, like bullying and stuff isn't as bad as it used to be so are other kids like hey you're you know it's cool we get it or do they make fun of you or no. how's that been they don't make no, fun of no no they're chill people see? Are, people see? are chill bro see they the don't... world is getting yeah. better ladies and gentlemen in spite of well, what yeah, you most think. people aren't are totally chill they, if they're usually like if they hear me tick or something they'll be like oh yeah you're okay and i'm like yeah i just got Tourette's and they're like oh that's fine you know no i've never i haven't really experienced much like, see that's pretty cool because my, yeah. my, my son blaze was in school and, and we were watching so we we're watching some show and it was it, it had something about bullying on there and blaze goes bullying's not really a thing anymore and i'm I guess mean, i'm no, guessing I mean, it is in certain places it, it's still a I'm, thing yeah but, it's yeah. it's to some extent but not I, I i think it was much worse like uh you know 80s and 90s and and so on so maybe yeah yeah so that's cool all right aiden what do you want to share with everyone oh i don't know what do you want to share with everyone Anyone have any questions for Aiden? <laughs> Tell him about how awesome right. he was at the CIA. Yeah, hey, uh, Ryan92 says, yeah. does he yell Allahu Akbar? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. So <laughs> if you had Tourette's syndrome and you're, just, you're, saying, you're walking around the airport going, oh, that's me. That would be pretty awesome. That would be hey, what did you present at CIA, Aiden? Uh, yeah, I presented on the contingency argument for the wow. Yeah, and I have to say, so uh, so Aiden here was at uh, CIA. Again, if you if you tuned in, uh, if, if you weren't here at the beginning, uh, CIA is the cross examine instructors academy where apologists who've been doing it for a while uh, give some training to you know to newer apologists and. And after you know some training, then they actually have to give presentations, and then we sit there and critique them. And then on the last day, we actually start blasting them. Yeah, we actually start start blasting away at them. Like 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 today, everyone gathered together, and it was just 
it was a free for all. These guys have to stand up at the mic and we start throwing stuff out. So like my first question that I asked, I jump up there and I say, I pulled out my phone, I point at this guy's face, point at this guy's face and I say, which lives matter? And your response is going on Twitter. <laughs> Get it? Because he's just baiting this. Whatever he says, he's in, he's in trouble, right? So questions like that. How are you actually going to react um, under fire? But a couple of things. So last year, you seemed really, really nervous. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, you seemed really nervous. You're you're uh, you're you're sort of stumbling around while yeah. you were there. And then you were in there, so. Yeah, and you didn't yeah. see you didn't you didn't seem very confident. Whereas uh, today, when you're giving your presentation, you were you were sticking and moving, right? Sticking, talking, moving. Oh, yeah, seemed so. really confident. And that was awesome. But then at the end, when uh, you had a really difficult question, well, you actually jumped in when Luke was answering a question, and then you jumped in with a response. You actually got got a, a burst oh, of applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burst of applause when you were you were spitting out your responses. Yeah. So it's actually no, so you guys know, too. Aiden is wicked smart for his age. Really, really smart. And so it's cool because we met him at 16, and he knew a lot of stuff about like apologetics and stuff. So he's got a really good head start. Really sharp kid. So. He's got to be going places in, in the apologetics realm. So, thank you, bro. Yeah, of and and yeah, and, and notice notice again. It's uh, uh, well, of course, there's the Tourette's, but that's the sort of thing. <laughs> he's like he's like that's all I am, man. I know, I'm just the Tourette. <laughs> yeah, we told him to make a channel called like Tourette. <laughs> yeah, bro. He's he's he literally <laughs> wants me when I make, if I make a YouTube channel, he wants me to name it like Tourette apologies. I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, that's so. Nah. Who needs bullies at school when you got friends like David Wood? Yeah, no. <laughs> Right. I, I view it as my job to like toughen up everyone around. Me, right? yeah, the up. world's too soft. <laughs> toughen everyone up. Yeah, no, you got. <laughs> no, you got. You got. You got people like uh, Aiden here, who's insanely intelligent, who's learning all kinds of stuff. When my kids, you know, were just playing video games a lot of the times and so on. Uh, but then, not not a lot of not a lot of young bucks like this. If you say, "Hey, we're going to roll up on the on the GMS camp of the Black Hebrew Israelites in Harlem," not a lot of kids say, "Hey, I want to go. I want to go be a part of that." So uh, anyway, cool things happening. Is that, what does that even mean? Tourette's has it. <laughs> Aiden doesn't have Tourette's. <laughs> Tourette's has Aiden. Got him. Got me there. Uh, <laughs> Alien Aiden. No, it's A I D A N. Whatever that is, I don't know. All right, Aiden. Any uh. Why are people? Why are people? Cindy Lewis. Who is this kid? What are you talking about? We've been we've been discussing things with Aiden. I don't know. I'd like for to like you, yeah. for like twenty minutes now. Who is that kid? I don't know. All right, Aiden. Anything you want to <laughs> look, at, look at the comments I get, <laughs> bro? Oh, bro, he got you. Man. All right, uh, here you have a request. Danny Varghese says, Aiden, reveal, reveal your wisdom. Aiden, reveal your wisdom. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. It's okay. You don't, you don't want to share your wisdom? What wisdom? About what? Yeah, about what? What about? what if what if someone said there's there's no good argument for the existence of God? What are you gonna say? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh boy. Yeah. See, he's right. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, my that's boy. That's my boy. Yeah. Uh, here you go. Uh, Burge uh, says, "What is your focus in apologetics?" Whoops. Yeah, that? good question. Yeah, I'm. I'm more, I'm interested in, I mean, all of it's interesting to me, but I'm probably more interested in the philosophical side. Um, and I like to deep dive, dive deep into like, um, like the hardcore philosophy, like um, reading the actual literature and stuff, not just, um, you know, William Lane Craig and stuff. But yeah, that's, that's the side of it. More existence of God, philosophy of time. Um, yeah, those are the things I'm interested in. And yeah, just so everyone knows, the argument that he gave um, for, for my class today was the argument from contingency, the argument... So the argument for the existence of God from contingency. Got him. Oh yeah, now, now we know. <laughs> now we know who Phil is. Thanks for telling me, bro. <laughs> that's the same guy who had the nasty, nasty comment. Oh, earlier. that's nice. Um, Too polite. Man. All right. So since Aiden won't talk unless he's not supposed to talk, in which case he won't stop talking randomly. Yep. Yep. Totally. That's <laughs> definitely what it is. Yep. Hundred percent. All right. So who are we gonna jump up next? You can always come back if people, if people right, have bet. questions here in a second. Wait, who uh, needs to who needs to leave first? Some no, of you guys man. have some of you guys are wanting to leave at some point. Man, we all want to hang out with you. Who wants to come up here next? Where are you up there? Yeah, it don't matter, man. I don't. Hey, oh, me. oh, come here, Carlton. Carlton. Oh, oh, let's get Carlton over. Oh, 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 o
Carlton. Right. Easy question for you, Carlton. Okay. Easy question. <laughs> Reparations. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, man. No, he's man, trying to get everybody in. Benjamin says, bring on Carlton. I want to ask him if he's a left-leaning Christian and what he thinks about James White. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He loves James White. Stop, okay, favorite so, person so we, got, we, got, we got three things here. Are you One, are you a left-leaning no. Christian apologist? No, I'm, I'm not left-leaning. I'm not right-leaning. You're not? I, I'm for the agenda of the lamb, not for the donkey or the elephant. Um, it's a nice little play. Uh, <laughs> what, what was the question about James White? Does he like James White? He loves James White. What does he think about James White? What do I think about James White? What do you think about James White's take on um, social answer. justice? Oh. And, and, um, I tried to get smoked, man. <laughs> I tried to get me canceled before I even get started. Yeah, that's um, your buddy. I like him for some stuff, but not so much for others, man. Like, he what are the things that, that you bro. don't like, Omar? Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Why don't you tell me, John? Tell us everything you don't like oh about every God. apologist you don't <laughs> like. Oh, my, somebody said to do the Carlton. Oh, man, if I had to do, <laughs> do it. Do it. Can, can you do the Carlton? I can. Do it, bro. Oh, yeah. yeah but, oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone step back, step back. Are you? Oh, my God. I might be oh, yeah. Hey, and just so everyone knows, his actual name is Carlton. That's not a nickname. It's a family name that goes back. He wasn't named after Carlton. I was not. That's a family name. And so he just got the, the coolest name in the world. <laughs> And then learn to do the dance. I did learn to do You're going to try it? Use your world. All right, somebody, somebody do it with me then. Uh, no. Nope. No, this is the end. That's actually that's, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually yeah. pretty good. He learned, it. he learned it because it's his name. Yeah. So, um. Have you ever uh, met anybody named a black guy named Carlson that can't do the Carlson? I feel like it's just part of the DNA. Like, it's just <laughs> in your black DNA girl. to know it. All so, right, now. Scooch in a little because the mic's right here. Okay. Reparations. Yes or no? Oh my gosh. Easy question. Easy question. Easy question. <laughs> yes or no question? I just no said all my white friends just their wallets just clinched up like, no, man. I think it just depends on just what, how you're defining it. Because I think, I think it's one of those things where I think a lot of people just express incredulity at it at first. And so when you start to look at state mandated evils that had a generational impact that, have, that haven't been rectified, you know what I mean? A lot of times... The question goes from being, should something be done to, well, how would we do something? And then, well, we don't know how we would do it, so nothing should be done. As opposed to, I think what the middle thing would be is, should something be done? And then we can discuss method afterwards. And so the concept of reparations, and keep in mind, I'm not necessarily trying to be pinned down to just saying, hey, let's everybody just get a free check. But I do think it's a conversation worth exploring that I think just gets shut down um, from the onset. And I'm sure nobody just got triggered from what I just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh just in you know just in case yeah i don't want him to be the only one triggering people uh, we, yeah. we had a discussion about yeah. it last night with a group yeah. of people and i sort of laid out my view that yeah. it, I, I i gave the example of uh, max bear who's a boxer back in the 1920s and 1930s and uh he actually killed or had a role in killing uh two guys in the ring and um he, he actually uh, i know at least one of them uh, had kids and max bear spent the rest of his life paying for that guy's kids, you know, to go all the way to college and so on. But, but I mean, think about that. It's, it's, you, you know, I had a role in taking your father away and therefore I'm going to do something that your father would have done if he, if I hadn't had that role in, in taking him away. And so he's saying, you know, uh, I'm going to do that. But, you know, what I was talking about was, you know, what, what if, what if it was like my great grandfather who had done that and like the, if my great grandfather had killed your great grandfather and now that has affected your family and you'd been in poverty and so on. Well, it's, it's weird to say that I have to do this or I have to hand over something. But I would say if I know that, then I would say it's a good thing to do. If, if I know that I can do something um, that has been caused by my family or something like that and I can somehow do something, then I would say it's good. And so yeah, if it's a situation where one group has been yeah. uh, oppressed or abused by another, my position, if you can do something, sometimes you can't, sometimes there's nothing. Sometimes it's yeah. so long ago, you just, there, there's no, there's no way to do it. I would say it's a good thing to do if you can do it. Um, the question then becomes, can you do it? What yeah, can exactly. you do about it? Yeah. And is it actually good? And would it actually yeah. 
work. But as, as you're pointing out, the discussion usually gets shut down because just people are thinking, right from the, oh, you're saying we just take tons of money saying, and hey, hand it you're over. saying I got to pay like, every I'm black person all, I see. I'm going to take all the money yeah. out of my wallet and yeah. give it to you, and then everything's right, yeah. right? We wonder what would that have to do with anything. And so, so it's got to yeah, it's got to be something different. Yeah. Than that, so but. something just happened in Asheville recently where they did approve something for reparations in the sense of now they're putting a lot of funding towards uh, investing in you know home ownership and a lot of businesses. Um, for, I guess, for the black residents. So they're recognizing the economic impacts that certain things like slavery and oppression had. And so do you take dance classes, Carlton? <laughs> I t- <laughs> no, I don't take dance classes. So you, that, that, that just came natural? Oh, that man. is natural, wow. man. But wow. um, yeah, but <laughs> right. But I do think that, you know, the fact that this is something that's being looked into you know, I think it's progress, you know, and I mean, I think a lot of times when we think about justice, especially in, in a in a restorative sense, in the sense that a lot of times it's just, I think that true reconciliation involves more than just uh, admitting an offense. I think it involves making the defrauded party whole. And so I think, you know, if we take a look at what that looks like, then maybe, you know, that's where we can have discussions. But I think too often it just gets shut down at, nope, whatever, just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and I think, you know, certain conversations are worth looking into. Uh, just had a question asking how old I am. Uh, 44, like a magnum. Yeah, <laughs> just got that. Bumbleclop boy said, oh, so this goes back to what I was mentioning earlier. If you don't believe in the Quran, why would a verse claiming the biblical scriptures are corrupted matter to you hypothetically? Well, if the Quran said that the Bible has been corrupted, if the Quran said that the Bible's corrupted, I wouldn't care at all. It's the Quran. I don't believe in it. This isn't about us. This is a point about Muslims using an attack against the Bible, which is contradicted by their own God and their own prophet. And so they're using it illicitly, right? So to give you an example, if I were arguing for the resurrection of Jesus and an atheist said, that's stupid because miracles don't occur, I might need to make a case for the existence of God and for the possibility of miracles with that atheist. If I were arguing for the resurrection with a Muslim and the Muslim said, that's stupid because miracles don't occur, my response would not be an argument for the existence of God or for the possibility of miracles. My my response would be, what the heck are you talking about? You're a Muslim. The Quran is filled with claims that Jesus performed miracles and that miracles are possible and that God exists. Why are you using that? You're not allowed to use that. If you want to leave Islam, and become an atheist and then come back and use that argument, be my guest. But as a Muslim, I'm not letting you use an argument that you are not allowed to use. So what we're doing is there's something similar where you've got Muslims around the world saying, your Bible's been corrupted, your Bible's been corrupted, your Bible's been corrupted. We open the Muslim sources and Allah says over and over again, like a beating drum, that our scriptures are the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. They can't be corrupted and we still have to judge by them and honor them. And... So Muslims are saying something that completely contradicts what their God and their prophet say. And their leaders who tell them, no, the Quran says that the Bible has been corrupted are flat out lying to them. They're flat out lying to them about what it's just like they lie about, uh, oh, the Quran has been miraculously preserved. They know that's a lie. They just keep telling people these things. So um, so it's, it's a weird situation where we actually have more respect for the Quran than a lot of Muslim leaders do, because we're at least honest about what it says. So what we're telling Muslims is, as long as you are adhering to the authority of your book, you have to respect the authority of our book. You don't realize it because your leaders conceal these things from you. We're going to draw your attention to those things so that you stop arguing this. In other words, there are differences between Islam and Christianity, and there are very important points of discussion and places where we want to examine the evidence. This isn't supposed to be a dispute between us. We believe in the authority of our scriptures. Your God, the God of Islam, believed in the authority of our scriptures. And your prophet believed in the authority of our scriptures. So if you don't believe in the authority of your scriptures, you're out of line, not simply with us, but with your own religion. And we're the ones who have to tell you what kind of sad situation is that. So that's the situation. It's not, this doesn't have anything to do with us gathering authority for our book. It's pointing out a contradiction in their religion. Their religion affirms scriptures that contradict their religion. And that's just a problem. And they don't know about it. And they won't know about it unless we tell them about it. So that's the idea. You see any questions you want to respond to? Don't get nervous now. Yeah, no. I wasn't you just scared. danced in front of all these people. That is very true, man. I don't think it gets much more nerve-wracking than that. I know someone asked, what was my favorite argument for the existence of God? I'm a big fan of the Kalam and the moral argument. 
um, pretty standard, but I think they're really powerful. Uh, hey, <laughs> for for people who believe, right? So you always yeah. have these extremes, right? Yeah. You always have these extremes. So you'll have people who see racism everywhere. Yeah. Everything's racist. Yeah, yeah. Everything you say is racist. Anything blah, blah, blah is racist. Yeah. But then you have people, ah, come on, man. It's the 21st century. No one's racist anymore. Yeah. And anyway, I'm just bringing this up because yesterday uh, someone asked you, yeah. what do you think about microaggressions? Because yeah. we think of microaggressions as ridiculous yeah. because everyone sees anything anyone yeah. says as a microaggression. For sure. And you're pointing out. No, you actually believe there are these things called microaggressions yeah. and you gave an example. So yeah. tell everyone what you would experience as a microaggression. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's one of those things like how, because everything gets heavily politicized. So I think, come a closer. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. yeah. So I think, for instance, I think it's possible to have some problems maybe with an ideology without having racial animus. So, for instance, I went to the National Science and Faith Conference. Uh, I think two years ago, and I asked this question about the law of causality and the origin of the universe. And the scientists, they were like, oh my gosh, it was a great question. And so afterwards, this uh, 75 year old white guy comes up to me and he's like, man, I was wondering what's a little black boy doing asking a smart question like that? <laughs> and I, I looked at it and I was just like, you know what? I didn't go off on the guy because, you know, obviously those were the vestiges of the time he grew up in, but he meant that as a compliment, mm -hmm. you know? And even though there wasn't any racial animus there, I was still really racist what he said, you know, assuming that because I'm black, I can't be intelligent. You know what I mean? Now, there wasn't any conscious um, racial animus there, but I still think that would be something that could be perceived as a quote unquote microaggression. Yeah, so people... he's not deliberately being aggressive. Exactly. But there is something. There. Yeah. And a set of erroneous beliefs that's, I guess, maybe coloring the world, uh, you know, the lens that he views the world through. And so and he might not be conscious of it. But then, you know, it's like if somebody says, wow, you're really smart for a black person or wow, you're really pretty for a Mexican. Like a lot of times people will say that and they'll mean it sincerely as a compliment. Right. But that would be an example of something where there isn't necessarily an intent or an aggressive, uh, you know, intent there. But there's still something of, you know, something that's kind of still racist there. And I think it's something that should be fixed. And it's funny because you you talk about all kinds of stuff and then I just. I bring up the stuff that's going to trigger people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I talk about so much more than reparations. Reparations. Man. And talk about <laughs> reparations and microaggressions. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what we want to hear about. Everything. Yeah, because here's the thing. I, I kind of like triggering people. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's weird. I noticed that. So, so, like years ago, I didn't, I mean, apart from abortion, I didn't really have political positions. Ooh, yeah. I would just take the opposite political position of anyone I was in the room with. Right? Oh my gosh, right. If I was if I was in a if I was in a room with like, you know, diehard leftists, I'd praise God for George W. Bush, right? Yeah. You know, like that. And if I was in the of course room with a bunch of, you know, conservatives or Republicans or something like that, I would I'd be I'd be maintaining the opposite. Oh yeah, gosh. I just realized that, you know, yeah, I look yeah, it's kinda fun. So. I mean, whenever I'm in a room, people my left leaning friends think I'm right leaning and my right leaning friends think I'm left leaning. So. Yeah. Now, just to be clear, I do have certain political positions yeah. now, but um, yeah, on lots of things, on lots of things, it's not just going to yeah. be, hey, this is the side I'm on. And therefore, I agree with everything on this yeah. side uh, or I'm again, you know, I'm, you know, I disagree with this side on this huge issue. Therefore, yeah. I disagree with everything they say. Yeah, um, we got to disabuse ourselves from this political tribalism that I really think does, you know, permeates a lot of American Christianity. Because people be ideologically gangbanging. Try, try, remember tribalism? Try. <laughs> so in this conversation we're having yesterday, this, uh, this white dude says, uh, this white dude says, uh, you know, what's, tell me if I'm wrong here. He says something along the lines of, you know, what's, you know what's cool about white people is we don't have this tribalism Whoa. that other groups have. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit like, bro. And and that, that, yeah. that that's a situation where he's not meaning anything offensive yeah. and stuff, but we, we you know we're like yeah, so, so I started lights. going so which tribe is he from? And exactly. that, that's what I meant when we like they would yeah. say something and then we would uh, we would no exactly was Christianity's position on black what huh? was Jesus really that white as he's portraying now? Who's asking that? That is could. Kadiza okay, well we dealt with we dealt with reparations. Now <laughs> we dealt with reparations <laughs> and microaggressions. Nice. And now was Jesus as oh, white as somebody said I'm a liberal Ah, oh, here we go. There you go. All right, so okay, so we're about to get the cultural Marxist, the intersectionality. SJW SJ the woke mob uh, woke SJW. victimhood mentality. Yeah, always what, complaining what about a victim. Give me, right. give me the reparations. What else we got here, give me man. the reparations. I'm a victim. I, I'm not a guy? liberal, but this is this is what happens though. Like you speak on a racial act you mentioned that and they're like, you must support abortion or you know, and it's like, no. 
but as a Christian, I stand against injustice. And so the question is, is injustice happening? And instead, they just there's such a, uh, you know, we marry conservatism with Christianity so much that if you disagree with one thing, that's a part of it, you don't have the gospel anymore. And I think that that's not what's happening. That's not Jesus. That's that's putting Caesar and Christ together. Come on. Come on, get some amen. Come on, brother. All right. I'm just saying, man. So, I, you know, all right. Anyway, all right. somebody yeah. passed me the offer and plate. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. You, you get, you're getting some feedback here. Yeah. You're getting some feedback. That's right. You're getting some feedback. That's right. Amateur aunt said, it's about to school you here. Oh, gosh. Here you go. Oh, the way snap. I look at reparations is no one alive in the U.S. was a slave okay. or owns a slave. So I don't agree with it at all. Okay. Pow. Well, I face. guess he just disproved everything. No. Um, so I guess part of it would be I think the concept of reparations isn't foreign. So we think about it like, let's say, with respect to indigenous persons who, because we recognize that there was a state mandated evil that was done against them that had it was, that didn't just die with them, that had generational impacts that still manifest today. No one alive was responsible for the taking of the native's land, but we recognize the impact that that had on them and that still permeates a lot of today. And so because of that, we recognize that something needs to be done to rectify that because we can't interpret events in a vacuum. History is constantly influencing the present. It is not so much focusing on, hey, just leave all that stuff in the past alone. But when we recognize the the impacts that it's has that it's had and the lack of reparations, which literally just means, I guess, the the fixing of a problem that was done, sometimes either monetarily or by other means. I think that that's one of the things that can go into it. So it's not so much on this individualistic notion of I'm not necessarily guilty of it so much as, you know, an evil that was done to a people that that and I guess in some sense has continued to be done, not necessarily slavery, but a lot of the other oppressions that take place. But that still has a lot of impacts. And I think the reparations, you know, not to mention the slave masters were given reparations for lost labor, you know, and there was a reason why. Slaves were promised 40 acres and a mule, and then they weren't given that because owning land is one of the main keys to gaining generational wealth. So then all of a sudden now all the land is bought up, all the property, a lot of the power, and then these people, you know, don't have access to that. And I think that you're seeing a lot of the, that play out with respect to poverty, which is one of the big influencers in a lot of different areas. But yeah, I don't think that that's a really good objection, but I understand the sentiment. Yeah, because uh, it, you... You, you could make your case because I, I said yeah. I said my position and I'd be I'd be open yeah. to modification is yeah. it's uh, you know, if it, it's if it's in, in so far in the distant past that there's just yeah. no way to work it out, yeah. then obviously there's no way to undo the the injustice. Yeah. Uh, but if there is something that can be done and just, just so yeah. you know, I don't think, oh, let's take this money and hand yeah. this to this. I, I, don't, I, think I, I, I don't think that works. Um, it's it's more like it, you know it, let's say this community is was massively poor because of things that were done is there yeah. something you can do to help fix that and i think um, we, we think of things as so far in the distant past you know what i mean one the emancipation proclamation was in 1863 but then the aftermath of that didn't even really get down black people well not even all people juneteenth is something that got recognition now right in 1865 so more than two years after the fact when the last slaves were free mm -hmm. but then afterwards you started to see um, I guess if you read the 13th Amendment, it doesn't necessarily say the ending of slavery. It just says the ending of slavery, except as a punishment of a crime. So then you look after that, and then all of a sudden you see black crimes that take place and sharecropping. And so a lot of them end up back on the same plantations that they were freed from. And then you start to see, you know, the March on Selma was like 55 years ago. But I feel like there's this perception that a lot of these issues are just so far removed in the past. It's like, what are you guys complaining about? And so I think when we recognize the impacts that history has had on the present and not just it being historical, but then when you take a look at some of the things that still take place, I think it vastly, you know, I guess changes the scope mm -hmm. of the conversation. Yeah. And, and I mean, notice here uh, again, I mean, if you took this seriously, yeah. then, then when you have an example, like a boxer kills another dude and that dude's family, let's say is now impoverished because, yeah. you know, they, they, they had a mother and a father, their yeah. father was earning money, and now he's gone and so on. Let's suppose that family's in poverty. Mm -hmm. um, l let's suppose it's not him. Let's suppose it's me and I'm his son, and I have an opportunity to help these kids who were impoverished because something my dad did. Oh, it's just a question. If, yeah. if you can do it, 
is it a good thing to do? I would say yes. But if we follow this, well, no, I'm not the one who did it. I didn't bust his head open. And these kids didn't have their heads busted open. Yeah. And therefore, uh, you what, you shouldn't do it? I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, it's just something, something, something weird about that. So again, the question is, you know, how far can you, how far can you push these things back and yeah. so on? And uh, anyway, I hear you. Yeah, I because like keep it. in keep in mind, this isn't just slavery. There's yeah. a lot of things happen after a lot, lot of things after there's, slavery. Right? I feel like there's this really sanitized history of you know with black people and the struggle in America that slavery happened like and the way that they'll see it like it was like something that was 400 years ago so but it, even though it wasn't we'll say slavery happened that got solved and then black people were kind of treated bad then martin luther king gave some speeches and then he solved racism and so what what were you guys complaining about you know and you look at the practices of redlining which for those of you who don't know that was something that started kind of in the 30s and the 40s that kind of barred black people from buying land and buying houses in you know nicer neighborhoods with whites they said no 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 they drew red lines around certain things they can't be here and so that's what created a lot of the hoods ghettos in america and i'm not saying that every black person lives in the ghetto no but that's what get created a lot of that it's not like a whole bunch of people just said hey you know what i want to live in the poorest most dangerous communities and yeah that sounds like the life a lot of them still that, that's like the literally the systemic outworking of a systemic evil that was taking place. And then it's not just something that was historical. There are banks within the last decade, uh, I think Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all are, have been found guilty of this practice of redlining to here and they're losing millions and millions of dollars. So when we see a lot of that, I think it, you know, but I think it, I think it informs a lot of it. You know, um, you just had, uh, oh, I it, think it, I've seen a few super chats. Oh, you're getting, you're getting refuted now. Oh, let's see. Hey, it's the same oh, one. Oh, snap. Amateur oh. Ant. Okay, so if blacks in the if blacks in the U.S. want reparations, they should start with the blacks in Africa for selling them to Europeans. Oh, just saying, just saying. Man, he gonna talk about black on black crime next. No, I'm saying, but um, yeah. So with respect to, hang on, I I, I just wanted to bring up, ladies and gentlemen, here's 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 what I here's what I here's something I wanted to here's something I wanted to address real quick, right? Because there there are people who are gonna be. Flipping up. How, how dare you? He's in the woke gospel. No, how, I how dare Jesus you? Right? The, I, I've noticed that anytime mm. someone, we, we're just developing a culture, right? Like like we have, of course, cancel culture, right? Where everyone mm. has to be, someone has to be destroyed for saying anything I disagreed yeah. with, even if it's 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, and most of us look down on it and say that, 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 that is ridiculous, right? But there is something similar going on with so many people on so many different sides, namely that the second you say something that I think is in any way associated with some position that I, I do not want to hear you, and I immediately want to shout you down and say that this is ridiculous. And so, whereas my inclination is, go and make your go and make your case. I don't yeah. care what it is. And you, I, you, you 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 want to, you want to make a case for white supremacy? <laughs> tell, tell me what you got. I want to, I want to, I want to, I'll hear this. I'll Who's listen to this. Go somebody ahead. Somebody just asked, did Jesus ask for reparations? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, first off. The whole concept of reparations is justice. The whole glory of the gospel is that the cross is the place where love, mercy, grace, and justice meet. Just The only reason the gospel works is because of justice. That's why 1 John 2, 1 says he's the propitiation for our sins, not only for that, but those of the whole world. There was a propitiation that satisfied God's wrath. The same thing is spoken about in Romans 3, 24 through 28. So... The whole purpose is that he wasn't unjust in what he was doing. Justice worked through the cross. So that question literally makes no sense, especially within a gospel framework. I'm just saying that right but there. But I noticed you just skipped over. Oh, yeah, but the blacks. If blacks there in we the go. U.S. want I just reparations. Had, there we go. They should start Let me get with that. the blacks in Africa for selling them to Europeans. So, yeah. burnt. Okay, so part of that, I think, is one, we're reading a 21st century mindset with respect to race into african relationships one africa wasn't a monolith so it's not like they just viewed each other as black people a lot of times the people that were sold into slavery were prisons of war so here's we get back to tribalism right there were competing tribes so it wasn't like hey i'm a black person and i'm selling another black person into slavery the same way that i don't ask you know when the ottomans fought other you know european nations well why did they fight each other they were white you know like that's not part of what it was but second the whole thing about, I guess, it being in Africa is that the injustices 
well, I guess one, the Europeans then a lot of times they were kidnapping Africans, but even with the ones that were sold from fellow Africans into that, the injustices done to them, well, one, millions died in the, um, just the way here. And then in America, that's where all of a sudden the injustices permeated, you know, and that's where they started to be, I guess, propagated in terms of now you are dehumanized. And that's why, you know, I feel like the whole, well, blacks should, you know, and I guess too, it was a state sanctioned evil. Like it was in U it was in the U S that it happened. So that's why when somebody said, you know, when, um, Arabs came in and enslaved <laughs> Africans in Africa, and then that was something that we, you know, we talked about last night. And then, so do they owe reparations? And I guess part of that is, well, I mean, if they're still living in Africa and if that's still something, I guess that would be something to be looked into, but I don't think that, that yeah, like, 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 so, and, and part of it is a situation where you can't really trace something in certain instances yeah. that long ago. The question yeah. is whether you can't like, suppose, yeah. suppose there were a slave selling town that had become massively wealthy based on selling slaves and mm. that uh, tons of gold and so on had been delivered to this town for these slaves and so on. And, and so that now this, you know, they're, they're, they're sitting on all this wealth that was from oh, I, slaves I and, you could, you could, mean... and you could actually identify it, identify it. this wealth was, was taken, you know, right. for, for, for these slaves. And we can actually locate the ancestors of this slave, of these slaves. Um, I, in that situation, I still wouldn't say take oh. the take the gold and so on, and, yeah. you know, and, and hand it over. Because again, I'm not thinking in terms of handing over money. It's a question of it, what can you do to if 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 descendants of this group are in the position that they're in because of things that were done to them, and you're in a situation where you can do something about that. I believe you should. That, yeah. that, that, that's my position. If you can't, then sorry, there's, there's nothing you can do. And then somebody said that the justice done on the cross wasn't societal. So all I'm going to say with respect to that is yes. And so I do think that there are still several scriptures that do speak to justice in society. So you go to Isaiah 1, 17, where it says, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression. You know, you go to Isaiah 10, uh, 1 through 4, where God is judging Assyria, which He's going to use Assyria to judge Israel for the injustice. Every valley there. shall be exalted. Right. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. Huh? Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you crazy, bro. And what he says, he's, God pronounces the voice, says, Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. What will you do on the day of reckoning when disaster comes from afar? To whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your riches? You know, Psalm 82, 3 through 4, when he's talking to the magistrates and talking about the perversion of justice that's taking place. So I still think as Christians, we should be against injustice. The question is, is injustice taking place? Now, uh, a few minutes ago, yeah. you mentioned systemic. Oh, boy. Now, Ooh. so you talked about the reparations. Oh, man. You talked about the microaggressions. We're trying to show you our full, woke, social exactly. justice warrior, leftist, <laughs> radical Marxist. Exactly. We're trying to get you in that category. <laughs> and the nail oh in your gosh. Marxist coffin oh my gosh. will be systemic racism, right? Now, now yeah. I, ju I just want to say, because he here here's how it goes. Here's how it goes, right? Yeah. You have people complaining yeah. that... It's not, hey, I'm not talking about this racist or that racist. No one, no. I don't think anyone denies that there are racists. Right. But what do you mean that the system is racist? What the heck are you talking about? What do you mean there? Right. Yeah. And you have you have people who, who point out, wait a minute, what are you talking about, man? If you're black and you work hard, you yeah. work hard, you'll you'll tend to do well. Yeah. You'll tend to do well. If you study hard in school, you're gonna do well. Right. And then you go out and work. So how is the system stopping you? Yeah. So what, what what in the world do you mean? Well, yeah, so I think there's a lot of things like you said. When we speak about racism, it's such a vague term because different people use definitions. So a lot of times uh, that can be equally valid. So a lot of times my white brothers and sisters will think about racism as sort of the Webster's Dictionary definition version, which is a valid definition, which focuses more on interactions between individuals. And I think I'm better than you because of X race or I'm going to treat you a certain way because of X race. Right. And I think that's a valid definition. But when we start to go beyond that individualistic lens and start to look at how certain things manifest in society where the color of the skin seems to be the independent variable. So, for instance, something like marijuana use, where black people and white people use marijuana at virtually the same rate. But black people get arrested at four times the rate 
and incarcerated at six times the rate for that exact same crime. Like something where something doesn't seem right there, where it's not necessarily somebody saying, I don't like black people, but there seems to be something in which there's an institution that's treating people differently based off how they look. There was a study that was done by the Harvard Business School that showed that um, when qualifications are essentially similar, if you had a white sounding name, you were 50% more likely to get a call back than if you had a black sounding name. So John Smith is more likely to get a call back than Demetrius Williams just because of sort of, you know, this, uh, because they had a black sounding name. Um, you know, there are studies that show that when the education is similar, that white men with prison records have a higher callback rate for the job than black men without. Like certain things that we look at it and we say something sh something's not right there. And the distinguishing factor seems to be the color of the skin. Same thing that I said with redlining where, and this is why the banks are losing these cases because there are black people that were qualifying for these loans and still being denied them. We look at certain things with respect to housing, to you know access to healthcare, like and this this stuff that permeates it. So that's what we're speaking about when we speak of systemic issues. It's not necessarily anathematizing white people or saying that this it's just because you know there's a whole bunch of white people in this room in the back. They're just saying we hate black people and we're gonna make you know. It's more so about recognizing how these certain systemic issues manifest with respect to different groups and trying to rectify that if it's an unjust application. And and something else we were talking about earlier today was you have you have a lot of people who see I I, I don't I mean I know examples of, yeah. of problems like this, right? Like like yeah. I mentioned I was locked up and I would I, yeah. I was I remember talking to someone and uh, he said, Hey, you know, what are you locked up for? <laughs> Uh, I said like violent crime, but I was locked up yeah. for, for, for bashing my dad's head in with yeah. a hammer. And he said, oh, yeah, what, what kind of time you get? And I go, I got 10 years. And I said, I said, what'd you do? He said, yeah, selling drugs. And I said, what'd you get? He goes, 12 years. And I was like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I bashed a skull in. I understand drugs are bad. I agree. Yeah. I agree, Jesse. I, drugs have wreaked havoc on my family, right? Yeah. I, I understand that. But, you know, the physical act of smashing someone's skull with a ball peen hammer. Yeah. And this guy's got... get got more time than yeah. I did. There seems something really, really weird about yeah. that. And so I'm not, a, I'm not sure exactly why that is, yeah. but if the, the point is, if it is just coming down to treating certain crimes as worse than yeah. crimes that they're not really worse than, right? Yeah. Then that, that's a, that's a kind of problem in, in the system. And, and, and here's something else we we're talking about that you have all these people who can't fathom the idea that the that there's there's something messed up in the system. Yeah. I point out, you know, we have all these people complaining about, you know, right. the 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 uh, the cancel culture. Yeah. And there's a whole system of Twitter and and, and the fake news and the yeah. fake media, and they're all working together to yeah. keep me in a state of silence. And if I I can't, I don't even feel safe to speak because yeah. I'll be crushed by this entire system <laughs> of oppression against <laughs> me. There's this system of oppression, right? right? Like I, I feel like that to a small extent when yeah. when the YouTube trust and safety team says, uh, atheists can criticize Christians. Christ this is exactly what they'll tell you. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna be, be making videos because I have screenshots of the stuff they say, right? Atheists can make, can, can, can make fun of Christians. Christians can make fun of atheists. Muslims can make fun of Christians or atheists. But if atheists or Christians make fun of Islam, I didn't even say Muslims. Yeah. If you make fun of Islam, now we're still getting away with it to a point because they haven't, they haven't fully rolled out the enforcement of it. But if they're saying, if you're saying something that is even offensive to Muslims, Muslims have since, uh, have since the Christchurch uh, Christchurch mosque shootings yeah. um, been classified as a protected group and now e any kind of speech that might offend them. It doesn't say you're calling for attacks against Muslims or anything. If it's something that could offend a protected group, it is hate speech. And that sounds so insane to me that if they actually go around and enforce this, I'm thinking this system is screwed up. Right. This system is favoring this group over mine. Yeah. Now just imagine that <laughs> Every time I went to point something out, every time, ever imagine a situation where every time I point out, guys, how come this group can criticize me, but if I criticize their religion or their ideology, it's hate speech and I will be suppressed. How come, imagine every every time I mention that up, someone, oh, you're, you're playing the victim. The victim mentality. Oh, you're, oh, look at me, I'm a victim. I'm pointing out, I see a problem. Now you can show yeah. me that it's not a problem. You show me that I'm wrong, yeah. but you don't just shout me down by saying, oh, you're gonna victim mentality. So the point here is, 
most of us seem to be familiar with structures and systems that are leading to the oppression of various groups. And tons of people are complaining about that. Oh, my ideology is being oppressed. My this, that, being yeah. oppressed by the system. But as soon as another group says that, it's no, I, I, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Why don't you say make, make your case and we'll, we'll, we'll see if you're right. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so. those are some of the thoughts. All right, a uh, couple more. Check this out. All right. Benjamin Handelman said, tell Carlton he needs to get his YouTube channel up and running. Oh, yeah. snap. <laughs> All right, then. But that's what the people want. How many that's times have we been telling you that over the past two days? Everybody has been telling me that. So I will yeah. definitely get on that. <laughs> Guys, and, and, and here's kind of the, here's kind of the reason. If, if you notice, mm -hmm. and I'll start making videos on this well. If you notice, everyone's becoming more polarized, yeah. right? The, 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 the various studies have shown that politically we're more polarized than we've been at, at, at any point uh, in since the since the uh, the twentieth century, right? And they, they they did studies since 19, 1945. All the stuff that happened, right? Yeah. All the stuff that happened, you know, Vietnam War, all the stuff that was polarizing. The record of polarization, political polarization, was set during the Trump presidency, and it broke the record, a previous record set by the Trump presidency. David, you're criticizing Trump. No, I'm giving you statistics here, dummy. That broke the previous record, which was set during the Obama administration. So Obama had broken the all time, the, the, the record, since records were taken, about this political polarization, yeah. which broke the record set during the George Bush administration, Jesus. which broke the record set during the Clinton administration. What does this mean? It means that each, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter Republican or Democrat, whoever is in charge, the polarization is increasing right yeah. the people are getting farther apart congress is getting farther apart right and think about part of why that is right um if you go far enough if, if you go far enough that way then anyone who's that who's that that in that direction on the political spectrum is on the opposite side right in, in other words think about this a lot you know for a long time people were kind of like this you have people over here and people over here and here here's the middle and you know so there's some overlap well if one group goes over here then now the people in the middle are far right you know the far right or far left right yeah. and then this group th then sees how insane this side is going they see how insane let's say the left is going my goodness look how insane they're getting and that makes them dig in and anyone who starts even heading in that direction they're so they're so worried about this group going so far in that direction that they freak out and what happens is they keep digging and anyone who's anywhere that would have been somewhere in the middle because i'm i'm in the middle of a, on a lot of issues i'm not in the middle on something like abortion and things like that i'm not i'm not in the middle on on everything but on, on a lot of things i'm kind of you want to you want to make your case make your case exactly. you want to make your case i don't care if you're a republican or democrat on this issue uh, make your case for why this should be. And if you can show that you've got a plan that works, great. I'm not going to side with a different person just because I disagree with you on, you know, this other issue, right? right. The idea is anyone who's now, if, if if someone's roughly in the middle, then if someone's far enough, you know, right or someone's far enough left, then that person looks exactly. like an extremist by comparison, exactly. right? So I'm so far over here that you look like an extremist because you're way over there. Well, that's not yeah. because of me. That's because you went so far that way. Or you went so far that way. Right. Yeah. And so we kind of need people who are kind of in the middle to yeah. finally take a stand because otherwise yeah. this doesn't stop. Right. If, if with each successive presidency, people, it, we're becoming more and more polarized. That ends in civil war, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's how that ends. And I think part of it is because, there, like you said, there's this stream anathematizing of the other where there's just such big extremes where on one side you do have the people who try to blame the system for everything and try to absolve someone of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, you have those who just try to say it's complete personal responsibility. There's nothing else at play here. Just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and hard work. Yeah. I, I would say it's a mix, right? Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not either or, it's both and. And so I feel like when you're reading scripture, because we as believers are reading scripture and find that it lines up 100% with a certain political side, we're not exegeting the text, we're reading through a partisan lens. And so I think that we need to try and divorce ourselves from that, disabuse ourselves from these tribalistic presuppositions that we hold so dearly to, find our identity in Christ and truly try to be the outworking of the church. And so, and I feel like that manifests in ways that don't, that aren't just identifying with a political tribe and then somebody says something that doesn't fit your preconceived version of what is and then just say you must be lying nope impossible mm -hmm. you know we have to be able to engage in these conversations 
And if we just shut it down and just and just say you're a racist or you're a leftist, you're you're a Marxist, you're a victimhood mentality, and just name call, we're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so a, a, as as someone who's who would be somewhere in the middle between <laughs> yeah. the extremes yeah. on a lot of issues like me, I'm yeah. guessing you have the, a similar experience in that. I'll say something and I'll get comments saying, look, you're a far left social justice yeah. warrior, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I'll say something else in a different circumstances yeah. and I'll get accused of being far right exactly. extremist. And, and it's like, guys, yeah. what, what are the odds that I'm so, okay? What are the odds that I'm simultaneously at both opposite ends of the political exactly. extreme versus the idea that I'm actually somewhere in the middle and, and other people who are at far ends of the political extreme both view me as extremists because they've gone so far off the deep end. Exactly. You know what I mean, all right. Okay. Now, this one actually isn't for you. OK, should I? Yeah. All right. This is for Veda. It's been fun. Come on. Well, it, actually, it's for seat. actually it's for me, but it involves Veda. All right. Get in the hot seat, man. I'm going to uh, Jesus walks, said, can you beatbox? Oh, can I beatbox? No, he says to me, can you beatbox? But, you know, but historically, the purpose of a beatbox is to give a beat. You know what I'm saying? To give a beat. And why would you give a beat? Yeah. Why would somebody make a beat? Here's the thing. Normally, that would be Vocab Malone sitting here. Mm. And I would drop a beat, and vocab would start freestyling. Vocab's not here. Freestyling is a rare skill. It's a rare skill, baby. A rare skill. A rare skill. You know anyone who can freestyle? Yeah, your boy. Oh yeah, <laughs> your boy. Hey, we're about to break it down here. What are you guys doing? Yeah. You ready? All right, you ready? Let's go. We're just going. No rehearsal, no practice. We're just gonna do it because that's how we do it. And this, and this, will, I want to try something. Are you when you beatbox it? Are you able to look at comments? Oh, you want you, you want me to give you comments? No, 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 no. What? Because uh, that's gonna be too many words. Hang on, hang on, hang on, guys. Right. Get, get, hey, how about how about I t I can I, I can put some comments. Now, check this out. I could give that. I could tell them to give some comments of things they want you to to freestyle about, and I'll put them all up on the screen here, and you can check them out. Does right. that work? Yeah, but let it be words, because like if it's too if it's a sentence, I don't want no sentence. So as I'm rapping, y'all can just say. Put like one word or like two words or something like that. And How about I, guys? Them. Give him some words to freestyle about. I'll just start putting them up on the screen. All right, cool. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. He wants some words. Some words. Ready? You ready to go? Yes, sir. You ready to break it out? Let's go. All right. Here we go. Uh. Data. One, two, uh. Yo, I'm just a lyrics wizard. I know you did was pick it, but since I'm wicked with it, we're completely different. Uh, cho, yo, check. I'm just a lyrics wizard. I know you did was pick it, but since I'm wicked with it, this quick is can't be different. The most hot is different, and I praise the God because you know that He do it and He saved me up. Don't you know that it ain't no facade? I got chips on the black and you want no facade. Put that on God, man. You already know how I do, and I'm kicking it with David Wood. We in the crew. I can't pronounce that word, man. There's way too many letters, but you know that it when it comes to flow, don't know do better. Nobody does it better. I do it best. I got the sauce and I come out the west. Who want problems, man? You know I'm from South Side. South Central, and you know that I'ma do it. I ride this one, you already know how I do. I set sauce already. Let's go to the roof. Ha, ha, da. I put that on God, and I'm talking about Jesus, not Allah. So who won't that? This is what I do. I am beautiful. When I flow, and I'm coming off the top, don't you know? And I do it, and I kill it when I rock. Give me some food. That's what I did. Came through the room, cause I came from the crib. Uh, uh, who won't beef or who won't lamb? You know me, this is what I'm gonna do, baby. Holla at D Wood, this is what I do, cause you know I'm from Inglewood. Uh, minimus, it's a minimus. What on earth rhymes with Leviticus? If I say minimal or finivus, because I'm gonna do it, don't be frivolous. Oh man, oh, it's that back, and he said magic. Backpack reminds me of vocab when it's that sack. 
back when Tori changed his name back, back. Well, I'm beta, that runs for savior. So I can do that, man, that's real easy, player. What we gonna do? Keep it on going. Don't you know that I can do it anytime I'm flowing? I already said Jesus, man, Jesus is the name. Don't you know that there is only one king, only one savior, his name is Jesus. I need a parable. Why didn't you believe this? Oh, man, this is what I'm doing. I can do this all night and I'll be pursuing. I used to do this all day with cussing. Now I'm trying to do it and my flow still busting, busting. Like I just had cheeseburgers and you know when it's raining like a fool. So this is what I'm going to do when I'm coming straight off the top. And who won't be? Not you, because I'm still a battle rapper, a battle rapper. You ain't got no hope. It, it's going to be a disaster. You got fruit, look, flow. That means you real whack. So don't step to me. Y'all hit you in the back. Oh, Madame, they said Muhammad. He ain't really God, homeboy. He's not a prophet. You better recognize it's only one, his name is Jesus. Uh, he is the son. And it's, hey, 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 hey. All y'all hating, wonder what I'm facing, wonder what I think about uh, reparations. All I know is that it's injustice. What's going on? I'll be a this when I bust this. There's no inclusion, it is exclusive. Jesus, what you doing? Jesus is saving the world the only way. If you got a tattoo, you can still be saved. I ain't trying to get into all of that stuff. Talking about jam killing, hey, that's enough. Where the, <laughs> uh, hey, and I can keep on going all day. Go catch the homie. What up, Adam Coleman? Don't you know that I'm still on here flowing? This is what I do before I got saved. Man, don't you know that rapping is easy? Acting like I'm Christian is the hard part. This right here, I can do all day. Calvinism, yo, go to my channel. I got a five part series on it. It features Mike Slick and Michael Holloway. Don't you know you can learn from it all day, don't it? Oh, you talking about cats? I'm thinking about you cats that don't belong in the ring with somebody like me. Don't you know when I start rapping, thuggers rapper gonna act like he sing. Cause don't nobody want it. Don't nobody bust this. Do it in public. You gonna need some justice. Let's keep it simple. This is in the public. You already know. Come on, bring your devil. Steffy stuff. What you talking about, baby? What's a fancy rap? Is that a hamster or something? Where they do that at? Act 17, apologetic, sad, bro. Don't you know I do it like magic? I broke it down, bro. What's a disaster? I can do this easy. Don't you know that I'm the best? You better believe me. Uh, don't you know I do it like bingo? And I do it like I'm bilingual. Who want that? Won't sayings. And I can quote a scripture from James 112. He said, blessed is the man who can endure that temptation. Uh-huh. You got to know your scripture. Look it up if I know that verse off the top. Don't you understand? I do it like meatballs and spaghetti when I rock. This is what's going on, baby. And you know I got heart. Give me a beat. I'm going to tear that thing apart. This is what I do. You already know. Data, data. You know I got flows. Oh, you saying, wow, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Don't you know that I'm going to do it? It is like the opposite. Anytime somebody do it, man, I can rock with it. Coming off the top. Now, man, when it's opposite, hey, where they at? Where they at, though? Don't you know that I'm I'm the king of the castle? So when it comes to flowing, you already know it. They call me Bing Vader. Oh, man, I'm doing. Man, I'm so fly. Fly. I'm so cool, like I'm cooler than the other side of the pillow. <laughs> hey man, why y'all mess about candy? Candy canes and stuff, man, y'all better holler at me. Give me something, give me something really harder. I can do this all day, and you know I'm really smarter. I'm coming off the top, and it's easy, boy. Man, I don't really say you want to see me, soy. Uh, oh uh, man. Hong Kong CH, he said for person she ate. It should, should be a CH in that word, but it's not. Bing is, that's why I don't like the language of English. This is what's going on. Oh, Dami, do it already. He's talking about salami. Bobby, oh no, that ain't Bobby Conway. That's Frank Turek. He just stepped in the play. Oh, Frank Turek in the room. Don't you know I'm freestyling? They giving me words too. Hey, man, Frank Turek's my big homie. David Wood, I'm the reason that they know it. This is what it's going. I rock the beat to sleep. I can keep on going all day from the streets, man. You better recognize. Oh, man, go. Go to the next word. I ain't going. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> You threw it off, Shepherd's <laughs> Ambassador. You ruined it. We are going to go for an hour. I, I would have kept going, but somebody had to say for Ruined it. <laughs> I'm like, what punchline am I going to say about fart without feeling immature? Is he a real one? Type that in y'all thing and subscribe to my channel. Is yeah, he a real one? After we, after we actually go, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll enter your info in the uh, description box. So yeah. Get you.
Uh, Frank, you want to sit down real quick? Let's go. Let's go. You were. I can't, I can't follow go. Vader, man. You were not invited, but you I, showed up. I can't find. I can't uh, follow Vader. He's the man. Frank, that all right, Frank Terrence writes asking. all the Eminem's rhymes. Y'all didn't know that, man. He's <laughs> For everybody that was asking, it was Frank talking on the chat. There's Frank. He was going to dinner. Now, uh, Frank, David, I've been told by many people that I think like a military general. Yes. I'm considered by many to be a tactical genius. Yes. And when I look around, I usually think, why can't anyone think 10, 12, 20, 30 years in the future and think, what do we do now to reach that whatever we want in the future? Mm -hmm. But when I think, who else thinks like this? You're the only one that comes to Why mind. is that, man? Well, because, well, no one told me this, but I'm just looking and it looks like, it looks, well, I mean, apart from all the different ministries you've got a hand in, um, which often parallel mine, which is leading to some interesting collaborations yes, and so on, yes, yes. as far as getting materials translated around yeah, the world yeah. and so on. I look at what's going on at CIA, and I'm, I'm not stupid, right? Here's here's what I, you can tell me if I'm wrong, because no one, no one said this, but this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. CIA, you know, cross examine Instructor Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we're here. Jorge broke it down. Yeah, all right. So, cross examine Instructors Academy. Mm -hmm. Looks like here's what you do, right? You put together these training sessions for upcoming apologists. You get experienced apologists in there, go mm -hmm. through some training, and then they go through some training and then they give presentations and so on. Then they get critiqued on their presentations. But then I notice you going around, hey, anyone uh, anyone stand out? Anyone stand out especially? That's right. And it seems that what you're doing is, hey, every, it's good for all these Christian apologists to get training and so on, but you're actually sort of using the conference to spot people of exceptional ability that so that can, when you hear yep. you snatch them out pay special attention to them and start giving them opportunities there's, there's one of them right there the most interesting man in apologetics who's right hey. here oh, hey. oh, hey. so i bet he did it i bet he did it at my little intro today uh and what, what are we talking about i was talking about how he wasn't how even listening you off, how good man. is he yeah, yeah. How could be? this is the best this, first of all, this guy is a great leader, number one. Number two, he's great at what he does in terms of technical. All the stuff that you're doing, he's also doing online. Oh, he's, and, doing, he's doing stuff, even yeah. stuff I, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're collaborating on. He's doing stuff I can't do. I don't, oh, know, yeah, put, yeah. I don't know how to put together the websites and the... Well, the, he does. Yeah, he's stuff. a student of all this. In fact, he's not just good in a Christian ministry. He could be good anywhere doing what he does. He so. could, you're saying he could be good in like a drug cartel. <laughs> he, said, he said I was the, I was the, what was it? The, the Pablo Escobar. Yeah, Pablo was, Escobar yeah, yeah, of apologetics. That's right, that's you know, it. I just tried, but yes, uh, I think that it's very important right now that we not only teach people how to be good apologists, but also teach people how to be good good at using the technology to get the message out there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you are good apologist if you don't know how to get the message out there. So that's what yeah. we do here at the Cross Examining Structure Academy. We do live stream. We, we teach people how to use the tools that they have at their disposal to get, to get the message out. Now, most of you who might know my name probably know it because of this guy. Because, look, let me be honest with you. I've never put a YouTube video on YouTube. He has, and his team has. That's why you. That's why you know about cross examine because of him, not because of me. All right, here's a, here's something for uh, for both of you. You guys should have some live trainings for all the Christian apologists living in other parts of the world. I would sign up in a jiffy. Just make sure it's free or by invitation. Thanks. So I'm guessing there's stuff stuff similar to that, but it looks like. He's suggesting something similar to CIA. Well, we're, we but. just we just recorded CIA this these last three days. So at some point in the not too distant future, CIA is going to be virtual. Yeah. Now it's not as good as coming. Trust me, it's not as good as no online training is as good as being there. You can't train the U.S. Navy SEALs online, okay? But it's better than nothing. And so what we're going to do is create an online version of this and then come on Zoom and evaluate your presentations. That's what we're going to try and do. All right, Frank, what, uh, what do you want to share with everyone? What I want to share is, you guys already know this man, it's his channel, but this man is fearless, and I'm inspired by what David Wood does. And if there's anything I want to ask him right now, I want him to read it, read it easy for me to say. 
<laughs> reiterate something that he and I were talking about with somebody else here at CIA, David. Let's uh, let's deal with this objection that people bring up about you and your tactics. David, mm. you're too rough on people. David, you go after people. David, you're not supposed to mock people. How do you respond? Yeah, well, for for years for years I was kind of anathema towards everyone, and it was only yeah. it was only a couple people. It was only a couple people who really, you know, wanted to have anything to do with me. You were mm -hmm. one, right? Mm -hmm. So you you were you were you know you you were supporting, and then you actually had me come out and, and speak and so on. But uh, yeah, it has a lot to do with this issue that in the West Christians have been trained to think that if you make fun of Muhammad or you make fun of the Quran or you criticize, there are Christians who even train other Christians that you don't ever criticize Muhammad, you don't ever criticize the Quran, you just keep the focus on the gospel. And then, you know, if, if someone someone accepts it or rejects it on, on that grounds, but you don't, you don't criticize Islam or the Quran, it was really ever since I've been involved in this, I mean, I'm talking upwards of 90% of the um, people, the Muslims who have converted to Christianity that, that I know only converted after seeing some serious problems with their religion. And Nabil, Nabil told me after he became a Christian, he said that when you were presenting evidence to me, when we talk about evidence for uh, Jesus' crucifixion, mm -hmm. evidence mm -hmm. for Jesus' resurrection, evidence for his deity, evidence for the reliability of the New Testament, I was always thinking after we go through it a while, Christians have a good case for what they believe. They have good evidence for what they believe. Yeah. But I would always think, but I have better evidence for, for Islam. Mm. And even if they were to show me with 99% certainty that Christianity is true, I'm still 100% sure that Islam is true. Mm. And your average Muslim thinks that he has that 100% assurance that Islam is true yeah. so that nothing can ever challenge it. Yeah. And then Christians are going around saying, don't ever, don't ever do anything to dent that 100% <laughs> confidence. <laughs> what are you talking about? Islam is the, the most wide open target of criticism in the history of humanity. Um, so the, the the objection the objection is that well it's just it's just unbiblical just unbiblical. Okay, to, why to is the, it not unbiblical? It's actually biblical in yeah. the right circumstances mm -hmm. to even potentially mock something. Mm -hmm. When does that happen? Yeah, in, I mean, in the Bible. If you're looking at when Jesus or the apostles would would mock something, it's usually in the context of religious leaders or religious oppressors who are leading other people astray. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what that's when you see uh, the Apostle Paul say to Elemis, the sorcerer, you you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness. That's not nice. If I right. said to anyone in this world, you son of the devil, you enemy of righteousness. Mm -hmm. and say, how dare you, David? You're a Christian. That's the Apostle Paul. Right. Right. That's the Apostle Paul. Jesus, when he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees, who are some of the most respected people in that society. Um, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you whitewashed tombs, you brood of vipers. I mean, these this is the these are the nastiest things you can you can say to someone. David, that's and not Jesus very is the last nice. One. I know, <laughs> right? And so, but my my position is, according to the Bible, it's acceptable to mock certain categories of people, mm -hmm. um, and we know we know what those are and, for their teachings. Yeah, for their teachings. Yeah, that yeah. are leading people astray. Yeah, and the if we look at those categories like religious oppressors oppressing other people. Muhammad is kind of the paradigm example of someone who's doing mm -hmm. that, right? There's never been a greater example of someone leading more people astray through false religious teaching and oppressing them in the process than Muhammad. So biblically, I have to think, if anyone is a worthy target of mockery and criticism, it's mm -hmm. Muhammad. So if we can ever do it, we can do it with him. Mm -hmm. And clearly, biblically, there are times when we can do it. Therefore, uh, I can do it with Muhammad. And you add to that the fact that it's just massively, massively successful. It works. It, it works in a certain culture. And the Middle yeah. East culture is different than the culture we have here in the United States. You were saying today that if you don't come out hard on people, what did they think in that culture? Yeah, and I actually, this goes back to Nabil. Uh -huh. Nabil was the first one where I, where I got this. And I'll tell you, we were watching a debate between William Lane Craig and Jamal Badawi. And that debate was a massacre. Craig just crushed him. I, uh -huh. I would have scored the debate about 95 to 5. Uh-huh. Everything Craig said, Jamal Badawi couldn't answer, and everything Jamal Badawi said, Craig crushed it. And so, I, again, I would have scored it like 95 to 5. Nabil was still a Muslim at this time. We finished, and I said, so what'd you think? He said, oh, Badawi clearly won. And I understand there are people who will just side with their debater. Nabil was not one of them. Nabil, mm. Nabil was extremely intelligent and a trained communicator. And so I'm thinking, what did he just see that I did not, that I did not see? Yeah. And uh, if, you, if you watch that debate, by the end of the debate, Badawi was so frustrated, he started yelling, right? Now, we look at that 
and say, yeah, your guy started yelling. Why? Because he's angry. He's frustrated. He knows he's losing. He's getting desperate. Right. Why is William Lane Craig perfectly calm? He knows he's winning. He doesn't have anything to be frustrated or nervous about. Everything's going well. And that's how we're looking at it. Took me a while to get it out of Nabil. But at the end of the day, Nabil was, in his mind, Badawi was yelling because deep down he knows that he has the truth. And this other person is blaspheming and insulting the Almighty. And this is welling up oh. as righteous anger for the blasphemy of this other person. The reason Badawi is is because he knows he's right and this other person is wrong. The reason William Lane Craig is calm is because deep down he doesn't believe what he's saying. Mm-hmm. He can't even get he can't even get excited mm-hmm. about this because deep down he knows he's facing. So it's a different perspective trip. from a different culture. And so just because you don't think it works here in America doesn't mean that it doesn't work overseas. It is working overseas. You're getting comments and emails from people who are saying I've left Islam because of what you've said. Let me say one other thing about this. Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. It's very difficult for somebody to leave their worldview for another worldview until they start to doubt their own worldview. So how do you get them to do that? Some of you people are old enough to remember this. You remember when the uh, when people used to come up to your door, knock on the door, and you'd open the door, and there'd be a guy trying to sell you a vacuum? I don't know if you're old enough for this, David. I've seen it on television. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, right. I do remember. I do. I do. I remember one of those dudes showing up at my trailer, at our trailer, yeah, 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 trailer yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to sell me a Kirby. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's and like $1,200. $1,200. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You remember that? You know how I know? You know how I know? Wife bought one two, two years before we got married, so we got one. Hey, 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 check this out, though. This guy comes in, he's giving a presentation. My mom sits there through the presentation because this guy's vacuuming her rug. And I, I'm sitting there, I'm seven years old, and I'm thinking, there is no way my mom, are you stupid? You think my mom is going to spend anything on, are you Are you insane? And so, yeah, so I do. So I did okay, so they, they come here, to, and what do they do? They pull a pillow off your couch, and they... They put like a bag around the pillow and then they'd suck all this stuff out of it. And it was like all sorts of bugs and mites that would come out of it. And they'd go, this, this, you need this vacuum. You know how dirty your couch is? You're sitting on that. You got babies. Are you kidding me? So you got to buy this thing now, right? Now, that person is only going to buy that thing if they think that their vacuum isn't very good enough or isn't good, as good as that one, right? So imagine this scenario. Somebody knocks on your door, brings the vacuum in, and you go, you think that's good. You go in your closet, you think of your vacuum, you go, look at this thing. And, you're, and, the, and, and the vacuum salesman says, you know what? That's so good, I want it. Let me buy it from you. Is that ever going to happen? No, the vacuum salesman's not going to come buy your vacuum until he starts thinking that his vacuum isn't as good as yours. And so what we need to do is we need to point out that their worldview is deficient before they're even open to our worldview. And that's what David does. And, um, yeah, the, the example that they gave when they came over, I remember it. The guy went over the carpet 100 times with our vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> and then said, and I'm going to go over it once with the Kirby. And he went and it sucked up all this dirt. <laughs> I got a guy here saying, I was, I, was, I, was, I was a Kirby salesman. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I was sitting there thinking, that is good. I do want that, that stuff sucked uh-huh. out of there. But no way my mom's going for that one. And she didn't. <laughs> she didn't. Uh, here you have a question from Victor. Victor says, mm-hmm. question for Frank. Why do people hold so tightly to young earth theory? Well, I think for many people, they're holding tightly to it because they're taking a plain reading of Genesis 1 based on the paradigm that they think Genesis 1 is trying to teach a time period of when creation occurred. And they're just going back and adding off the genealogies and they're saying, well, the the earth must be 6,000 plus years old. Now, you can certainly take that, that interpretation of Scripture. That's a perfectly valid interpretation of Scripture. But my co-author, Dr. Norman Geiser, wrote a systematic theology, and he looked at all of the different possible interpretations of Genesis 1. And I think he said there were about 13 major presentations, and all but two of them are orthodox. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like 11 different ways took, you could look at it. I just took a, the course at SES, mm-hmm. and we look at seven of them, and they would, one that was heretical, which yeah. is the, 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 the complete myth. Uh-huh. And uh, the, all the other six, or, or yeah, all the other six are completely valid that we can right. actually take and still say, hey, you know what? You're a Christian. I'm a Christian. We can differ on that, and we're good to go. On our YouTube channel, there is a YouTube video. We mm-hmm. won't spend time going into it here, but you know, how old is the universe? And you can see the perspective I take on it. If you want to go over there, 
But I, I don't judge the motives of people that hold either view. I say, hey, that's a perfectly valid view. You could be right, uh, at least from the, from the scripture standpoint. I think there are two types of revelation, though. There's general revelation and natural revelation, and you need general revelation to interpret natural revelation. For example, if you didn't understand language, or you didn't understand cause and effect, or you didn't understand order, uh, that you couldn't you couldn't validly interpret the Bible or the newspaper, for that matter. There are certain things you need to bring to the text in order to know what the text says. And uh, go look at that video if you want more on that. Yeah, well, I think the problem also comes when people take one posture and, and make that. Uh, the gospel, you know, when it's something that is secondary or tertiary. And I think mm -hmm. that's where the issues come. So if we stop looking at things that way, I think we'll have a more and more sure. uh, a strong and united body, if you will. That's right. John Lennox has a good book, Seven Days to Divide the World. Check that out. Um, here you have a testimony from a True Idea Apologetics. That's Adam Coleman. Hey, Adam, what's happening? Adam says, straight up, CIA was a game changer for me. My public presentation style and quality greatly improved because of it. Thanks, man. And yeah. he was in New York. He was yeah. in Brooklyn with us last year. Do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, all right. Any uh, anything else to share with everyone? No, man. I just want to say thanks for the work you're doing. Very few people have his guts and intelligence at the same time. So if you're out there and you haven't signed up as a subscriber or you haven't signed up as a supporter, what are you waiting for? Do it. He's got a point. Yeah. And in fact, he's building a whole apologetics empire last I checked, uh, right? Yes, sir. It's an empire. Right? It's an empire. So no. so help him out, all right? Because if you help him out, you're helping out the body of Christ, not just nat nationally, but globally. In fact, we were, Dave and I were meeting with people today that are taking our videos, my videos, his videos, and putting them into like six or seven different languages. Mm -hmm. Urdu uh, and Tamil yeah, yeah. and all these other languages. Farsi. Yeah. They're taking the videos. And they're putting them up on different channels on YouTube. So people in Pakistan, Iran, Bangladesh, India, these predominantly Muslim countries can get the truth. So he's doing a lot of great work, this man right here. So make sure you support him, all right? And by the way, I saw some questions where people say, what do my shirt say? Yeah, what is this? It says, contradict. It's a play on the coexist bumper sticker. And if you need any you can go to crossexamine.org hit store or you can go to the um, you can go to the youtube channel the crossexamine youtube channel and thank you all we just hit 200,000 subscribers and you can go to the store there you can go to the teespring and you can get you one hey uh we've been going quite a while we we uh we want to get off here pretty soon but uh why don't you give everyone a little uh, quick quick story just so they know you, so they get to know you. Okay, well, I uh, my name is Jorge, Jorge Hill. I'm originally from Costa Rica. For everybody who yeah. don't know me yet, I'm the executive uh, um, uh, director for Cross Examine. I've been working with Frank going on six years now. I actually met the Lord in a federal facility, uh, in a prison uh, in Georgia. Uh, and the Lord changed my life. I was down for nine months. When I came out, I fell in love with apologetics. I remember... Uh, listening to Ravi Zacharias on the AM FM radio, and I was surrounded by Muslims, by Baha'is, I was surrounded by Hindus in a, a federal facility of people who were going to be deported. For some reason, God allowed me to stay here. I came out, I started studying apologetics, and uh, I went to the Cross Examine Instructor Academy. That's where I met Frank. And then about a year later, I was uh, on, on board. They had hired me at Cross Examine. Uh, my passion is to bring apologetics to the uh, Latin American community, to the Spanish community. I travel all over the place uh, and we create apologetics resources in Spanish. And now we're going to do the Apologetics Empire. If you want to go to apologeticsempire.com, from there you can go to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook channel, to our Instagram account. Um, and yes, my passion is to get these resources in the best way possible in digital format to anybody and everybody who is willing to learn. So you can look me up uh, at the crossexamine.org website. And yes, my name is Jorge Hill and I'm, I'm super happy to be here letting you guys know about all of these. And if you want to get better at your communication when it comes to apologetics, make sure you sign up for the Cross Examine 2021 in Chino Hills, California next year. All right, and uh, everyone's been on, right? 
Yeah. 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 All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, we've been going for about two hours now. And, uh, yeah, just wanted, again, everyone to know, for those who came in late, uh, I, I sort of haven't been on in a few days because I've been down here and wanted everyone to know, especially when it, everyone is, uh, everyone's right here in the same hotel, wanted to get a bunch of people uh, on together. Um, I'm leaving in the morning. I think most of us are leaving in the morning, and so I'll be back home tomorrow evening. Probably won't post a video, probably be tired, but uh, should be back in business on Monday. So, catch you all then. Everyone want to say bye? All right. Peace. 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 And I'll have, uh, I'll have all of the, all of the links to uh, channels or websites of uh, everyone here down in the description box after I put them in there. Catch you all later. Peace. Fast hands, baby, and Jesus' name.